Hey, if you don't like the weather in Miami, stick around for 24 minutes. Welcome to rainy Miami, Florida, the Orange Bowl, where tonight on College Football Primetime, the South Florida Bulls take on number nine, the Miami Hurricanes. Hi, everyone. I'm Mike Adamley, along with the UCLA Bruin, Charles Arbuckle. Welcome to Miami, Florida. You know, the thunder that we heard a week ago at Raymond James Stadium in Tampa was South Florida rocking Louisville, then number nine, rocking their world. They won 45-14, and a young man by the name of Amari Jackson had a night that players can only dream about. He had an unbelievable night, Mike, and I think the reason why he had dreamed about this but also had practiced for it. You can see him going up, former basketball player, and what he did is he worked out in the gym. He had his coach throw him footballs every day after practice. He was a high school quarterback, very good player in, in high school, but he always knew that his 6'5 frame would give him a lot of leverage against these defenders that he would have to play against. He can also throw the football, and that is another dimension that he adds to this team. Andre Hall is their main guy, but you have to account for number 18, who idolizes Randy Moss, and I'll tell you what, he sure looked like him last week. He was so good. He was the Big East Offensive Player of the Week. Miami, probably when the season began, looked at South Florida, and they were weren't even on their radar, but they've got their attention now. And one thing head coach Larry Coker would like, in addition to a W tonight, is improved play on the part of his young quarterback, sophomore Kyle Wright. Well, you're in Miami. Everybody wants scoring. They want the glitz and glamour. This offense is only averaging 22 points per game. Kyle Wright had given up, the offensive line had given up 14 sacks the first two games. Last week, he found his comfort zone. They're hoping that Kyle Wright can stay at that point. He's one of those guys that's from California but he has the toughness of the Pennsylvania kid, according to Larry Coker. So the question, will Kyle Wright continue to improve on his best game as a collegiate last week against Colorado, or will lightning strike twice? Will South Florida slay number nine for a second consecutive week? College football primetime, USF versus number nine Miami next. Welcome back to the Orange Bowl. Number nine, Miami have won the toss. They will defer to the second half, so they will kick off. You're looking at Brian Monroe, who will kick off. The rain has stopped here. Chad Simpson is back deep for the South Florida Bulls, along with number 83. That being Jackie Chambers. And Simpson, of course, had that kickoff return. 94 yards for a touchdown, which changed the whole complexion. They'll probably kick it to Jackie Chambers, who played his Pee Wee football here at the Orange Bowl. He's very familiar with this turf. You saw the weather. The rain has stopped, about 81 degrees, 88% humidity. Winds coming out of the northeast at about 7 miles per hour. Monroe's kick is high and over end. Chambers, you were right, takes it in one step deep in his own end zone, looks to the left finds little or no running room stopped at the 15 yard line and that's where south florida will begin their first possession of the game after that 15 yard return by jackie chambers mike the biggest difference south florida is going to see is the speed of miami they are fast but miami has the book on speed and you know that that's what they want it that's why they want their defense on the field first to show they can shut down south florida quarterback pat jewel miss 6 3 220 a junior from miramar florida did a great job last week managing the football game for his head coach jim levitt engineering that 45 14 upset of louisville Jewel miss under pressure and finds his man wide open. It's Amari Jackson, but Amari drops the ball. And give Jewel miss some credit there for hanging tough against that Miami pressure. Up front or the backs of receivers for South Florida, Andre Hall, the thousand yard running back from a year ago, along with Jackie Chambers, who returned the kick. SJ Green, Amari Jackson, the man who just dropped the football, the tight end Derek Carter. Theodric Watson, Frank Davis, John Miller, Chris Carruthers, and Mark Dial up front for the South Florida offensive line. The Orange Bowl is not packed tonight, but it is very loud. Jewel miss, hands off to Hall on second and ten. He breaks a few tackles, cutting it back against the grain. Very close to the first down, Charles. Had a nice run, a chance to cut back against this Miami defense. Brian Pata, Barack 
Baraka Atkins, Ryan Harris, and Thomas Carroll up front for the Canes. The linebackers, perhaps the best part of this defense, Rocky McIntosh. Romeo Davis may not play tonight. John Beeson there on the outside. The secondary, Kelly Jennings, Brandon Merriweather, their best player, Kenny Phillips, and Devin Hester. Third down and three. Julmas outside to Hall. He got the first down. I like this drive so far for South Florida. Even though Amari Jackson drops the ball, it spreads the Miami defense out, and they can't use the speed that they like to have. And then you come back with the play like this. It's perfect against a team like Miami. You take them inside. You see how all the linebackers and everybody are inside? There's only one man. Andre Hall can get to that corner, and he can almost run over the man, which he does, Kelly Jennings. But that's what's a, a good offensive projection right there in that first drive. The Miami Hurricanes rank 116 among Division 1A schools in sacks. And one of the reasons is people take the short drops. They run the football if they can. They're not able to run the football that time. I think another thing that's happening against this Miami team is that their linebacking crew has not played to the level that they want them to play. Their front four are good and solid, but their linebackers have to really step up. And Leon Williams has to lead that charge, the middle linebacker who's taking the place of Romeo Davis tonight. Glenn Cook is also a substitute for Rocky, or he's playing on the opposite side of Rocky McIntosh, number 55. But the one problem with South Florida, they'll put you in a nickel package and you take out one of the linebackers. Hall is the lone setback along with a fullback this time. We give the ball to Andre again, and again he is stuffed by about four or five Miami Hurricanes. Now Miami wants to take, put them in a position where they have third and long and they can really tee off on them. Most teams, like you said, Mike, they want to come off, and Larry Coker has mentioned this as well. They want to go three and five steps, three steps preferably. Fifth season as head coach and Won a national championship in his very first year in 2001. Third and eight for the Bulls. Jewel miss out of the shotgun. Time to throw over the middle. Overthrown, intercepted. LeVon Ponder, number 35, with the pick. A return of 42 yards for the Hurricanes. Very bad throw by Julmas. It's one of those situations. Miami, you know they're going to be in cover two. So if you throw it over the head of whatever receiver's back there, cover two man, man under. They're running with their man, and you can see Ponder just playing back there. Makes a nice interception. No one around him. You have to throw the ball down low, and if the receiver misses it, no one else can get it. Good job by the freshman, LeVon Ponder. Jackie Chambers was the man that Jewel Miss was looking for and overthrew. So great field position now thanks to that turnover by the Canes. They'll have the ball on the South Florida 11-yard line. You know, now I wonder if that first pass, Amari Jackson catches that, it gets Jewel Miss in the comfort level. He got hit, but he still didn't look comfortable on any except the one throw to Andre Hall. The other ones, he looked rushed or just didn't look fluid and throwing the football. He had no pressure on that play. I think you're right, Charles. And speaking of right, Kyle Wright getting the plays. The offense is on the Miami Hurricane 30-yard line right now, huddled up, getting instructions here. You know, Mike, all young players say the game slows down. You have to remember that he has been in a situation where he hadn't played a lot of football. <laughs> you know, he, he backed up Rock Berlin last year, and now he's in a position, this is his fourth spot. So he's not a veteran guy. Even though he's a sophomore, he's been in the system, he hadn't had a lot of playing time. So he's coming off his best start as a collegiate last week with 264 yards of pass offense against Colorado in a 23-3 win. And on first down, play action fake. And South Florida's not buying number 54, Patrick St. Louis. We saw this last week. Even though Kyle Wright has good ability and good speed, he still, the defense is very quick for South Florida. Tyrone Moss, Quadrant Hill, Sonoris Moss, Ryan Moore, Greg Olson. They're the backs of receivers for Miami. Up front, Eric Winston, Tyler McMeans, Anthony Wolfschlager, Tony Tella, and Rashad Butler. They do the dirty work of the trenches. Second and 15 now for Miami. 
And the Canes can't get the playoff movement on the part of the uh, Miami offensive line. Number 64, Rashard, Rashad Butler. Prior to snap, false start on the offense. Number 64, five-yard penalty, remains second down. Gerald McGinn, tonight's referee. And Mike, that's the 15th sack on the year. Patrick St. Louis got that. Also to the problem with Miami. We'll talk about it in game. Defensively for South Florida, Simmons, Cray, Jones, and Royal up front. The backers are Nicholas Moffat, who is the National Defensive Player of the Week, and Patrick St. Louis, the man who made that great play two plays ago. Second and 21. Right. Had a man wide open. His tight end, his favorite receiver, Greg Olson, number 82. You just can't blow chances like that. John Simmons blew that. The line left in actually looked like he was in coverage. They run a zone blitzing scheme. And if you go back as the end, you have to cover all the way. Greg Olson is an outstanding tight end. He's going to run his route. And you see the blitz coming from your right side. Well, there's a vacated zone. You see 45 trying to run back. Also, Trey Williams. No one got back deep enough in order to cover Greg Olson. That should have been six. Third down and 21 now for Kyle Wright and company. Trying to score a touchdown in the red zone, which has not been Miami's strong suit so far in this young season. Wright flushed out of the pocket, runs him himself. You talked about that athleticism. He has some. He really does, but 39 possessions now so far on the year and only nine red zone touchdowns. 38 possessions, excuse me, 39 now. Only nine red zone visits. And they only have three touchdowns, four field goals, maybe add a fifth, and they've missed two field goals. So they've really struggled not only getting the ball to the red zone, but once they get there, they don't do much with it. John Petty had topped to a 33-yarder. He's three of or six of eight this year. That one is up, and it is good. So Miami, thanks to the interception, is able to capitalize, maybe not the touchdown, but they do get three, and they lead here early on. First quarter here at uh, the famed Orange Bowl in Miami. The Hurricanes, number nine in the country, take a 3-0 lead over South Florida moments ago on a 33-yard field goal by John Petty. And so the Canes will kick again. And number 20, Chad Simpson. Chad Simpson and Jackie Chambers back deep for the Bulls. Mike, what they want to do is not kick to Chad Simpson. They always seem to go, and now they're trying to switch it up, and they're kicking right to Chad Simpson. Good job by South Florida for mixing that up. He's going to follow the block of Chambers, but again, that Miami special teams, just like their defensive unit, very, very quick as we return you to the studio and Mike Hall. Off to a good start there, Mike. How about Notre Dame and Purdue? If you need a big play, you go to Super Samarja. And that's what Brady Quinn does to Jeff with a great grab. Set up a run by Rashawn Powers. Neal in from one. Purdue has just fumbled the ball in the one. We'll update that in a bit. From Shillelagh to Adam Lee. Mike? Okay, thank you, Michael. Back here in Miami, the Hurricanes have taken a 3-0 lead over South Florida. Their head coach, Jim Levitt. Still probably on cloud nine after last week's thrashing of number then number nine Louisville 45 14 The only coach South Florida has ever had Andre Hall loose you see that low to the ground running style his ability to break tackles He's a special player Charles He really is and he's a chess avid chess player We'll talk about this all night, but he knows where to go and I think that's what makes him so effective his ability to get inside and he gets small and then gets quick it makes it tough to tackle a guy like that but he also the linemen love blocking for him because if they create a hole Mike they know he's in and out from a pawn to a king a gain of 14 for Andre Hall the chess master and better field position now for the Bulls and their quarterback Pat Julnick gives the hall again 
Nice run behind the blocking of John Miller and Chris Carruthers and Frank Miller up front. And the reason why that happens, Orion Harris, Baraka Atkins, Ryan Pata, Thomas Carroll, they come up the field. They really rush hard. And that's not a problem. It's a one-gap scheme. You expect that. But South Florida knows if they zone block, just push a guy just a little bit. That creates some running room for Andre Hall, takes the ball out of Joma's hands. And basically takes those Miami defenders out of the play. Exactly. Second down and seven. To fake the Hall. That slip screen outside to Johnny Payton. And the ball goes loose, and Miami's got it. There's a flag down on the play, unless that was an official throwing his spotting, flag in spotting there. Spotting yeah, where the spotting. fumble occurred. Well, you can't have these kind of mistakes. If you're South Florida, you can't beat a team like Miami by making a turnover on both of your possessions. You just can't do it. That was a good job. Thomas Carroll with the fumble recovery. Kelly, Kelly Jennings comes up and I think knocks the ball out. Nice second effort by Johnny Payton, but watch how he's carrying that football. You're right, Mike. And Kelly Jennings sees that nose. Go for the football. Good job by him of stripping it out. Rocky McIntosh there to create a little havoc. Kyle Wright's got the screen pass set up perfectly. Tyrone Moss trying to take it the distance. Finally run down at the 21-yard line. Tyrone Moss who had back-to-back 100-yard games to start the season against Florida State and Clemson got in the doghouse of Larry Coker earlier this week but the, the, the reason why this happened there's no one over there South Florida because they moved action one way and come back the other Tyrone Moss was in the doghouse a little bit but he slimmed down he's playing better he has to pass protect the night also Trying to stutter step his way to gain a few yards up the middle there. Gain of about three for Moss in that play. Create a short field for this Miami offense. And, you know, you give it, you spot him a three-point lead already by that long return. And now you give him another opportunity. And that's what South Florida can't do. They can't put their defense in this position. See, Larry Coker has to be happy. However, this is where his team has struggled in the red zone. They won seven, not three, that's for sure. Second down six, Canes. Fake Moss rolls right, does Kyle right. He's got his man. Quadrant Hill, the fullback. And that should move the chains. In the, in the mold of those running backs from Miami that have the ability to play fullback, but also can be the feature back in Quadrant Hill. Six receptions on the year, one touchdown. 6'2", 230, very good ability in the blocking game, but they love to use him out of the backfield. Has seven receptions now with that catch he just made. So the Canes deeper in the red zone again. They've got the ball first and 10 at the 11-yard line. Can they capitalize? Give us the Moss. You see the power that this man has. 5'9", 220 pounds from Papano Beach, Florida. When Larry Coker recruited him, he called him the best running back in America at the time when he signed out of high school. A chance to be a special player if he got his head on straight. Well, and also the offensive line comes off like they do, and they just manhandle people up front. Good job right there by Eric Winston and Tyler McNeese, and just a good job of Tyrone Moss of finding the hole and hitting it with a door. He takes a couple of bulls to take Moss down there. He gets very close to the first down. They can have a first down without scoring a touchdown in this possession. This is where Miami should be very happy with the ability. Up, they have up front guys. They have a, a man down right here. Tyrone Moss, though, first two games, 100 yards, and then the last one, 39. It's Mike Jenkins on the ground for South Florida. And this programming reminder, Thursday night quarterback Cleveland McCoy leads a high-scoring South Carolina State Bulldog offense against the Norfolk State Spartans in a MEAC battle. College football primetime Thursday on ESPNU at 7.30 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com.
Jenkins uh, trying to get up under his own power. He had to go out last week when he had those uh, bandages around his knees. He started catching cramps. I don't know if this is a cramp. It looked like inside there with all those big bodies around. You hope that he's okay. Trying to put a little weight on that right foot, right leg. He'll have to be escorted off the field, and that would be a big loss. Like so many of the players for South Florida, native Floridians, there are 39 players, Charles, from Miami, South Florida, who attended high school together in this game tonight. Which is <laughs> 18 South Florida players attended Miami-Dade of Broward County School, so this is a homecoming for them right now. It's not too good. You know, the, 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 the love that they wanted is not being shown by Miami in particular, but also by them on offense. You hope Mike Jenkins is okay. He was a very vital call last week against Louisville, made some plays, and just had a, a well of a game covering the Louisville receivers. Sure he did. Third and one, Miami. Ball at their three. They can gain a first down if they gain a yard here. Moss trying and struggling hard. The ball might have gotten loose there. The official that was right there, there was no in indication, and then he came in and pointed. I think all the players thought the ball was loose. Let's watch it again. He did signal for the first down. Good power running game. Tyrone Moss getting inside, and he gets hit right there, tries to stretch out. Stretch out. Yeah, that's, what it, yeah. that's when the ball came out. Hit by Patrick St. Louis and Stephen Right. Trying the quarterback sneak. You know, Mike, after covering South Florida for two weeks, I've been impressed with their defense. I mean, their front seven, even though they're not very big, they do a very good job of stopping teams from getting short yardage. We saw that against Louisville last week. We also see it against Miami. Miami's struggling to get this touchdown, and they're on the one-foot line. Now they take a step back. These guys, Alan Cray and Tim Jones up front, do a great job of occupying people and letting their linebackers like St. Louis and Moffitt and Nicholas do the dirty work. First and goal, second and goal. Moss again given the ball and great defense by South Florida. Penetration, penetration, penetration. All of those gaps were covered by white jerseys. The orange jerseys who usually mash people didn't do it. Watch all these white jerseys get in the gap and just shoot them. And they don't allow Miami to come off the ball so everything gets stopped back. Traffic jam, so to speak. You know, you hate traffic jams. If you're a running back, you hate them even more because you want to get in the end zone. That's one of the co-defensive coordinators, Rick Kravitz, who did a masterful job along with Wally Burnham last week devising a scheme to totally befuddle Louisville. This time they can't stop Moss, though. Third time was a charm, and Tyrone Moss into the end zone for his fourth touchdown of the season. Well, they tried it the other way, to the left side of the line, and then finally they said, we're going to go over our center, we're going to send it right there, ISO lead, and we're going to get this ball in the end zone. It's hard to stop a team like Miami or anybody when they get on the one-foot line, but you have to say South Florida did as good a job as you can, but you hate giving up seven points to a team like Miami. And Moss did his job. The junior from Pompano Beach, Florida, played his high school football Eli High in Pompano Beach. And Miami gets what they were looking for. Not a field goal, but a touchdown inside the red zone. When in doubt, if you're the Miami Hurricanes, you give it to Tyrone Moss. He's given the Canes a 10-0 lead. Five thirteen remaining here in the first quarter here in number nine Miami with a 10 nothing lead over South Florida courtesy of two turnovers all ten points that last scoring drive nine plays 39 yards and it ate up four minutes and 14 seconds of the clock culminated with Tyrone Moss's one yard touchdown run so Brian Monroe who's been very busy tonight his third kickoff sends it deep and Chad Simpson has it at his five. 15, a flag on the play, and Simpson overwhelmed 
by a sea of orange tacklers. Whenever you have a chance to put something on tape, everybody watches. And those Miami coaches have been telling all week, you better get down in your lanes and you better wreak some havoc when you get there. Blocking below the waist during the return, number 57. Half the distance to the goal from the spot of the infraction. That's blocking because First you're out step. of position. <laughs> You try to stop a man the best way you can. You just can't do that on return games. Two turnovers from South Florida. They've been the difference so far. The interception. And then the fumble. When you're playing a team like Miami, they're going to be opportunistic. They're going to make you make mistakes and then capitalize on them. If you're South Florida, you can't have the penalties that you're having. You cannot have the turnovers that you're having. Because if you do, this crowd will get loud. And these players will feed off of it. That, that last graphic, you can see why South Florida was 3 and 1 coming into this game. Pat needs, Pat Jolmus, the South Florida quarterback, needs to remain calm. And he can't hang on to the football. So all the things that went well last week for South Florida have gone in the opposite direction tonight. Dr. Jekyll, Mr. Hyde, so to speak, for Julmas. Never, never was ready for the snap. Luckily for him, Callis, Calais, Campbell wasn't there and quick enough to get that ball. Had he been, that would have been another turnover deep in their own territory. South Florida at their own six-yard line, second down and 15. Give the ball inside the hall, some tough yardage. Maybe back to the original line of scrimmage as we go back to the ESPNU studio and Mike Hall. Michael? All right, Mike, back to Notre Dame and Purdue in West Law. Fourth and goal, Rashawn Powers Neal pushing it in from the right side. I love Lamp. Does he really love Lamp, though? One yard out, his second of the game. It's 14 0 Irish, Mike. 14 0 there, 10 0 here at the Orange Bowl. South Florida at third and 12 now. Desperate need for a first down. Julmas out of the shotgun in his own end zone and getting her pressured. Throws up a lollipop. Looking for Amari Jackson, but he, I think he was just throwing that football away. Yeah, it wasn't a very good throw. He struck. And we talked about it at the break. When will they go to Courtney Denson? Because you can't depend, if, if, if Pat Julmas isn't doing the trick, Corey, Courtney Denson was the starter in, in the first game of the season. He got pulled by, by those coaches there in South Florida. Now you have to worry about Devin Hester, who hadn't had a return touchdown. Could this be the night? Devin Hester, one of the most dangerous return men in America in college football, standing it at the South Florida 45-yard line, feels it at the 46. He's got some running room on the right side. Now he decides to change direction, and you can see why this man is so incredibly dangerous. Finally knocked out of bounds inside the 20-yard line, a 40-yard punt, a 30-yard return, but if you count up all the yardage in real estate, maybe about 60 yards in that return. Devin Hester thrilling the crowd here at the Orange Bowl. We'll be back with more first quarter action. Week seven yards on punt returns tonight. He'll move past Frank Smith on the all-time list. And just like that, Tyrone Moss, touchdown. He hit that hole so quick, Mike. It was, he, when he got to the hole, you knew it was going to be six because there was no one there to stop him. Tyrone Moss did an excellent job of running. Once again, up front, this offensive line is getting very comfortable with what they're supposed to be doing. And Jim Levitt obviously does not like what he sees. Somehow he's got to stop the bleeding and turn things around here. 16th career rushing touchdown for Tyrone Moss. His second of the evening. That last one went for... Another look at the second Miami Hurricane touchdown of the evening by Tyrone Moss. Sutton change offense. I like what they do, and they just really slide them over, make them fiasco. At the halftime, they're shutting them out 31 nothing, Mike. All right, thanks, Mike and Tom. Back here, it's been all Hurricanes so far, courtesy of a couple of 
University of South Florida turnovers. The Canes lead 17 nothing. Well, now they can pin their ears back and really get after Pat Jumas when he's in a passing situation. They have to rely on Andre Hall. A lot of time left in this game. Right? Hall gets stuffed right away. Total domination up front. Well, what Miami's doing now is they're controlled pass rush. They know that they can run, 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 but also be looking for the running back on this spread option offense. You have to have a control level of rush. Brian Pata getting a pat on the back after stuffing that play. 6'4", 270-pound junior right in Pat Julemus's face. He's looking for Courtney Vincent. They've been talking all week about oh, yeah. that play, so he wants to see Courtney Vincent get in the game as well. Julemus again overthrown out of the hands of Peyton into the hands of Hester. They are looking for a defensive or special teams touchdown this year. They haven't got it, which is surprising for a team with Miami's talent, but they've come close twice tonight. That interception returned by Devin Hester, 30 yards. Devin Hester has been playing behind Marcus Maxey. He got the start tonight. You can see what potential this guy has because of sudden change on offense. Once again, Joel Mus with a high throw. I know it's been raining. I know it's wet, but you got to get that football down. However, Devin Hester, this is slow motion, people. Look how fast he looks against all those <laughs> other guys slow that are going slow motion. And it was Jewel Miss himself, the South Florida quarterback, who finally got Hester out of bounds. Hester just suddenly turns on the thinking of, I'm, I'm a defensive guy. No, 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 now I'm offensive. And this is a dream come true for Larry Coker. Another possession inside the South Florida 10-yard line. <laughs> what was Tyrone Moss doing on that play? Looked like he couldn't quite get his footing. Broke a tackle. Did a little, a little wiggle. Couldn't get his momentum going well, again. <laughs> it, it may be a little bit slippery out there. About three minutes before the, the kickoff, there was a huge rain squall that blew through the stadium. They do have uh, a, what they call prescription athletic turf here and a wonderful pump system that drains it, the field well. It's one of the best college football fields in America. Miami, Miami inside the 20 tonight. Two touchdowns on three possessions. The other possession, a 33-yard field goal by John Petty. And South yeah. Florida thinks they have the football, and they do. So finally, a break for the Bulls. Well, it's consistent rain here, and Kyle Wright looked like he pulled out a little early. That's a huge turn of events for South Florida if they can take advantage of this. Tim Jones with the recovery. Kyle Wright's going to pull out early. What? And the ball never gets up to him, really. The center, Walshlocker, never gets the ball up to him. He can't even see it. He tries to go back underneath and get it. Watch, the ball doesn't even get up, never gets off the ground. So it's get, it gets kicked right there by Andrew Bain, and that is why Tim Jones is able to recover. For South Florida, you'll take any gift you'll get. It's not Christmas, but you're wishing you could find a gift under that Christmas yeah, tree. Unofficially, Tim Jones given the fumble recovery, so Courtney Denson in the game now at quarterback. You called it. Charles. Andre Hall has set back. And confusion on the part of the Bulls offense. Now last week, every time they called a the timeout in the first half, it's been a touchdown. Somehow I get the feeling that that's not going to happen tonight. <laughs> Things that make you go. Mm. <laughs> well, there's a lot of, a lot of cousins and relatives and friends. Courtney Denson and Brian Payton. They've talked all week to each other. I mean, they, they said strap it on. They're going. There's a lot of trash talking between a number of guys. Willie, Willie, yeah, Willie, Willie, Willie Williams and Chad Simpson are related on Chad's mom's side. They've been talking smack all week, and Williams told Simpson. Be ready, because we're going to blow you out. This ain't no Louisville. <laughs> strap it on. Cubs, strap it on. And they mean that. I mean, that's what no, no, they do. You know, in, a, in a good way, you know? about your cousins or anybody that you've had as a relative, if they're younger than you or you played together, you grew up, you want to beat them worse than somebody you don't know. Because, you know, at family reunions and different situations when you're around them or when you get back to old high school games, homecoming, they're going to talk more trash than anybody you know. Well, right now, South Florida is lucky that they're 
not facing a 24 nothing deficit because Miami was in position to score again until that last fumble on the center quarterback exchange. But rugged, rugged field position for the Bulls inside their own 10. Hall bouncing it outside, takes a tackler with him out of bounds after a gain of about seven yards. Andre Hall, the senior from St. Petersburg, Florida. I think that's an important thing you have to do. Get Andre Hall involved. Make sure this is a, this is a minute and 38 seconds left in the first quarter. A lot of time. So you got to slow the game down. Miami is playing at another level. Attack their defense as much as you can with Andre Hall. But now Courtney Denton also a fine runner in his own right. Four rushes last week. For 63 yards. Five yards on the last carry by Hall. Second and five. Denson will keep it himself. And we've got a flag on the play. And while we figure out what's going on here, we send it back to the studios, Mike and Tom. Well, back to Notre Dame and Perdon. Ben Jones trying to get a 43 yard field goal here, but Trevor Laws gives him the old, Who's your daddy? How's your father? Blocks it, so the Irish are stuck with a 14-point lead. Purdue can't quite get on the board. Still being shut out about nine minutes and a little bit of change left in West Lock, Mike. All right, thanks, Mike. Back here at the Orange Bowl. South Florida upset winners a week ago over Louisville. Just can't seem to get started. They've changed quarterbacks already. Courtney Nickel Denson. Block on the offense, number 83. After distance to the goal, replay second down. Not good when you're in a situation like this and you just keep finding ways to hurt yourself. Miami has to be happy with what they're getting now. They're getting a lot of opportunities. South Florida just making mistake after mistake after mistake. So now it's second down and 12 for the Bulls. Who is standing in his own end zone takes it off across the 10. When you talk about field position game. It's just so hard to score touchdowns when you start on the 10, the 15, the 5. I don't, I don't care what kind of offensive firepower you have. You can't. Your playbook shrinks so much when you're backed up in your own in, in your opponent's. End zone or you're in especially zone, when you're facing a team like Miami that thrives and this kind of stuff Miami player has suddenly taken a knee in their secondary Levon Ponder who had the interception earlier tonight and the players were going to the official and the official told him you got to call a timeout because he was he lined up and was ready to play and then he just went down. Before the play even began, he was lined up in his position and kind of went went to one knee. And his teammates were back there trying to call a timeout for him or um, alert the official that he wasn't ready to play. So Ponders going to the sideline will try to get word as to the extent of his injury or not quite sure what happened out there. You know, if you're a defensive back and you're playing in this game, you're excited because you have a chance. They have a nickel package in. You know the balls are in the air. It's wet. You have an opportunity to catch one and take it back to the house. Third down and nine. Denson rolling to his right. With a man in his face. He throws the ball out of bounds. Leon Williams came and just destroyed that play. He came so fast. Rattled Denson's cage, that's for sure. Holding on the defense, number 24. 10 yard penalty from the Maxey, line of scrimmage. Automatic. Miami's right First cornerback down. guilty of the infraction. And they really let South Florida off the hook here. Well, Andre Hall definitely picking up the block there, but. Courtney Denson never sees Leon Williams until his helmet comes off. And this is one of those design plays where Andre Hall may have to go outside, but he doesn't get a chance to. He blocks on Brian Pata, who's 
you want, you know, you want to chip block him, and then Leon Williams just sees it and comes up. Marcus Maxey, who's playing a lot tonight, because you'll see a lot of nickel packages with three wide guys. Devin Hester starts. They actually had playing. three guys on number 95. You know, it's funny, last week when we were talking about the Louisville game before it had occurred with the head coach, South Florida head coach Jim Levitt, the one thing he was he was worried about that his team might get overwhelmed. Yeah. Probably maybe he was thinking about this game <laughs> because right now that was what South Florida is trying not to have happen, get overwhelmed by Miami here early on. Well, Mike, you know as well as I do, this is a tough place to play. And the quarter ends there. And, and this is just an area where you have to come and you cannot have mistakes against Miami. South Florida has made two turnovers that have resulted in Miami Hurricane touchdowns tonight. And as a result, they lead 17-0 here at the Orange Bowl. South Florida is going to try to reverse the trend when the second quarter begins after this. The rain starting to fall once again here at the Orange Bowl as we begin the second quarter of play. Number nine, Miami, all over South Florida tonight, 17 to nothing. And one of the reasons has been turnovers by the Bull offense. Three turnovers resulting in uh, 17 points and three and outs. They've had three of those. So their offense hasn't been able to do anything tonight. Courtney Denson, as a matter of fact, now in as the Bulls quarterback in place of Pat Julmis. Now he airs it deep to Amari Jackson, who had two steps, not one, on Devin Hester. That was a nice throw by Courtney Denson. And I don't know if Amari Jackson thought he could get it out there. He wasn't running to me as fast as we saw him last week. I don't know if he's worried about that first drop. He has to let that go. Courtney Denson gets back to has time. And if Amari Jackson is running all out, they always teach you, put your hands out at the very last second. He goes a little bit early, but I think he's still affected by that drop he had earlier in the game. Well, they definitely need to get Amari Jackson involved. That's only the second time they've thrown to him. The first one, he dropped the ball. He was wide open. That time, I don't know, he, like you said, he may have pulled up for some reason. Third down and 10. Another crucial situation for the Bulls. Denson's got time. And nobody can seem to hang on to the football, although credit number 19, Brandon Merriweather, with the big hit. Brandon Merriweather's a hit. Last, against Clemson, he hit the tight end so hard that he needed surgery to remo remove his spleen. He doesn't do it dirty. He's not malicious. He just comes up and hits you. This dig route, you know you're going to get hit. And Johnny Payton earlier with the fumble has a chance. Now, that's just a good, clean shot. You might as well catch the football because you're going to get hit anyway. Brandon Miller, whether you get an indication there why his teammates call him Killer B. <laughs> but the funny thing about it is they give him a hard Where time. Where am I? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, yeah. yeah. The, the receivers have had this problem with South Florida. Even though it's wet, that's where if you have to take those gloves off, you take them off. Johnny Payton earlier with the fumble, Amari Jackson with the drop. Some guys play great when it's nice and clear skies, but when it's raining, that's when your concentration level has to go up. And Johnny Payton, another one of those six foot five inch yeah. wide receivers that South Florida has, it caused a lot of mis mismatches last week against Louisville. Miami's defensive backs aren't the tallest guys in the world either, but the big problem is, is they've got something going for them, that, that ability to, to tag you. Yeah, they're physical. <laughs> And I think receivers know that when they're going out on their routes. 17 nothing here. Mike Hall, what do you have back for us at the studio? We've got more from Super Samarja. Notre Dame, Purdue going down inside the 10 yard line, four yards out, and there they find the man. Samarja's doing a great job. That ties him in the nation. Top touchdown catcher. Has won in every single game they've played, and they are rolling on the road. 21 nothing, Mike. So Charlie Weiss, a happy man tonight. The same cannot be said for Jim Levitt, at least so far, the head coach of the University of South Florida. His team trails 17-0. And Miami's got the ball back again. Kyle Wright, the sophomore quarterback. Darnell Jenkins. You know, Kyle Wright talks about his receivers, and the one thing he says about Darnell Jenkins, he's just a scrappy playmaker. He said, you, you match him up against Ryan Moore, Tenorius Rice, I mean Moss, excuse me, 
he, he says this guy is just one of those guys that likes to make make plays and he just does it for you. Second down and one yard to go. The give is to Moss right up the gut. Well, Miami has had a ton of success tonight. The big guys inside, McMeans, Wolf Schlager, and Tella did a nice job for number 30. And I think with Miami, they didn't know their identity early on. Are well, they going to pass the ball? They were looking for balance, and, and they really haven't had that this year. And they had a young quarterback who has some weapons around them. He has some very good weapons. And now the running game has really established itself. Even in those first two games, they lost, they lost the first one, won the second one, but they've established Tyrone Moss as their go-to guy. Play action now, now that they've established Moss and right airing it out for number 83, Sonoris Rot Moss. Brother of Santana. Santana. <laughs> and, and I don't know if he's got the same blazing speed. It's not bad, though. Well, and he's had, he's got another gear, but think about it. He's been injured for the last three years with hamstring, ankle, quad. He's finally healthy. Yep. And, whew, if you're healthy, you can see how he just ran by the defensive back there. Last week against the Buffaloes, 111 yards and one touchdown of five receptions. What, what do you always hear coaches say? If he's easy, even, he's leaving. He's leaving. <laughs> and he was gone. He was gone. Give us the Moss again. He's got running room. He breaks two tackles, and he's not going to be caught until he's down to the South Florida 35-yard line. Number 32, Carlton Williams, finally brings him down. Well, he's going to get another 100-yard game if he keeps running like this, and this offensive line comes off the ball like this. This is what you want to see. Even in the, in the game of draw play that's a draw play and there's still no penetration because you got a tired defensive line and you have a very strong powerful offensive line usually on a draw play you see some jerseys of the, of the other team coming across you didn't see it on that play right play action on first down again that time threw it into coverage number 54 Patrick St. Louis breaking up that play intended for James Bryant the backup fullback Clearly, South Florida, you can see those guys now starting to be a little tired. Patrick St. Louis, they've been on the field a whole lot, those defense has. You know, I, we watched them last week, and it was just an amazing, amazing effort on the part of, of all the South Florida players, especially the guys on defense. And I was wondering earlier, Charles, about whether or not they left a lot of their game on the field last week against Louisville at uh, Raymond James Stadium. Change of a direction there. The fullback, Quatrin Hill. You can see Quatrin Hill gets a chance to run inside. Walshlager loses his helmet. The, the center. This is the offensive line that hadn't played a lot together, and that's why they gave up those 14 sacks in the first two games. Gave up one tonight, but it was more so a rollout play where you're one on one, and Kyle Wright couldn't beat the defender but now they've done a very good job and that running game takes so much pressure off of them. Big third down for the South Florida defense here third and six right rolling to his right directing traffic and had taken himself and he runs out of bounds. That's a good play. They don't get the first down. They don't get all the things that they want in that but that's a smart play by Kyle Wright. He could have gotten rid of the football once he got outside of the tackle box. Mike Adamley along with Charles Arbuckle here at the Orange Bowl in Miami here in the second quarter. The ninth ranked Miami Hurricanes leading South Florida 17 to nothing and now facing a field goal situation. John Petty, who is six or seven of 11 this year, has already hit on a 33 yarder. This from 49 yards away. Got the distance. And he's got the accuracy. John Petty with a 49-yard field goal, his longest of the year. Canes can do no wrong. Back with more after this. On your mind. That's, you know. A weird aberration of the Miami Hurricane mascot, Ibis. 
Bullhorns. Yeah, he's got he's got some Texas Longhorns on. He's got some Mardi Gras beads on. He's got football. He's got well, he's just got about everything there. He got notice. He, he wanted got, to be on got, TV, you know what? and he, he got his wish. <laughs> his his 15 not minutes but seconds of fame. Miami Hurricanes with a 20 to nothing lead here. 12 14 to go here in the second quarter. Back deep. Jackie Chambers, number 83, and number 20, Chad Simpson for South Florida. Miami has played in all phases of the game, and you got to wonder the only way you can really always change the momentum of the game is either a turnover, where you take it the other way, or in the return game. This Miami return unit, special teams unit, has done an outstanding job of running down in their lanes. You know, it's one thing to create turnovers. And it's quite another to be able to capitalize on them, and that is what Miami has been able to do tonight. It's probably the best starting position for South Florida. Bruce Mompriere there with the return. Minor women's college soccer, Sunny at 2 Eastern, Texas A&M Aggies take on the Texas Longhorns right here on ESPN. Yeah. <laughs> South Florida starting on the 32 so far tonight. This is what they had of average. So not very good. First time they've had a chance to have a little breathing room. Denson. Hall wasn't ready for the fake. Denson falls, falls on the ground. Did the ground cause the fumble? Referee said yes, it did. You know, it almost appeared that Hall thought it was a. a, a There's some miscommunications, no question about that. He's standing back there, and he, he, it almost looks like, yeah, he goes for the fake. So he, he was going to set it up. But the, the Miami Hurricane defenders were there so fast that he, Denson didn't have a chance to get outside. Some plays work, some don't. Maybe you take that one out of the playbook tonight with the speed of the Miami defense. It takes a while to set it up, and it's, it looked like Hall was taking his time, but it wasn't. It was set up that way. Averaging close to 300 and 392 yards per game coming into tonight's contest. That was fourth in the Big East. Tonight, they've only managed 39 yards of total offense. Amari well, Jackson, that's a good sign. He caught a football. Well, and it was also a good design play to get him in, in open space and try to make him do some, some things with the yards after catch. Look at this offense for South Florida and, and, and Miami's defense. There are opportunities. We've seen it. Amari Jackson was deep, overthrown a little bit, maybe didn't quite run under. He dropped the pass earlier. There have been holes in the Miami secondary. They've had a lot of young guys get hurt. They're playing a lot of people in that secondary. Gain of 12 in the last pass reception. Third down and two for South Florida. Denson again play action and there's that Miami penetration. Four or five guys. I don't like that call. Mike. Devon Nansen the first to reach a number 57. It's third and short. And what are they go, doing yeah, right? You go with that play. You either try to run it. There's no. You know Miami's going to come with all that speed. They're bringing guys. <laughs> I mean, right. You Rocky can't McIntosh, get... number 50. He ran right by Andre Hall. Hall never had a chance to block him. Leon Williams was right there. I mean, those. You, you can't give this defense a chance to tee off on you like that. And, and that, that this is this is the microcosm of what Miami is going to be this year. Their defense is great. There's yeah. no question about that. They may even be national championship caliber great. They're waiting for that offense to get closer to where they're at. Marcus Edwards with the punt and rolls inside the South Florida 20 yard line. Or Brandon Baker rather. Helmet on the field. 48-yard punt. A night for rain slickers and ponchos here in uh, damp South Florida. Miami, Florida, where the number nine Hurricanes lead the University of South Florida 9-0 here. It has been all Canes tonight so far, but tonight, field position has been their ally, but this is the first time they have started deep in their own territory at their own nine. 
As we go to the studio and Mike Hall. Well, more scoring for Notre Dame as they take on Purdue. It's third and two from the nine. They're up 21 nothing. Darius Walker looking for his fifth straight 100-yard game this season. And look who's getting hit with the ugly stick. It's 22nd-ranked Purdue down four touchdowns, Mike. Not a good night to be a Boilermaker, and so far not a great night to be a South Florida Bull. The kids from Tampa, Florida, trail Miami, 20 to nothing here. James Bryant breaks a tackle down the left sideline, and he's finally knocked out of bounds by Mike Jenkins, number four, who's back in the football game. You know, this is not about just Tyrone Moss. They've got about four or five running backs who can bring it. Well, and that's Quatrin why you have Hill, James Bryant, this man number 45. And that's why you have to play well here, because if not, someone will take the place. James Bryant getting an opportunity, 6'3", 240. Once again, they don't get guys that are 260, 270. They get them in that mold of 210 to 240, where they can play as the feature back or the lead back. Sort of like Jamal Lewis from the Ravens, a gain of 22 on that last play by James Bryant, pass reception by James Bryant. Right going to the airwaves again this time for Tarnell Jenkins, Pat St. Louis well, you know, on the tackle. South Florida, Mike, has talked about wanting to get into that upper echelon of schools. You have a chance to come down here in one of the toughest places to play. And you want to be one of the big three or the big four, would you would call it. You've got to play better than this. <laughs> and Miami's showing you how you can get to that next level. Big four being Florida State, Miami, Florida. And right, his favorite receiver, Greg Olson, is going to take it to the house. My, oh, he coughs up the football before he crosses the end line. It's going to be a touchback. Wow. And University of South Florida football at their own 20-yard line. Greg Olson can't believe what he's just done. Great play, great catch, but bad holding of the football. Greg All he's Olson. got to show for it is that piece of turf that stuck between his helmet and his Two, face mask. Out of the Allen zone, touchback, first and 10, South Florida. Greg Olson had a second shot at it. He's running down the field, and this is just a nice catch and throw right in the middle, a little out route, and he turns it back in. Those the defenders are going to come over the top. This kid's but, got some speed, too. He's running away <laughs> from defenders. Mike Jenkins goes in and just does Strips what he the can ball do. from behind, so it, was, it wasn't a faux pas on Olsen's part. No, Mike Watch Jenkins, Jenkins. good hustle, gets it out. Left arm, bang, right there. Good job by Mike Jenkins. Now, Greg Olsen has another chance to recover it. If he recovers it there, it's, it's a touchdown. Goes out of bounds, it's a touchback. Wow. Andre Hall trying to bounce it outside, and against this speedy hurricane defense, that's ill-advised, to say the least. Now, Greg Olson may go and tell some of the receivers, now, I can run, guys, because <laughs> yeah. he, he was moving down the field. Mike Jenkins just a little bit faster. Brandon Merriweather, the man on that tackle, had 14 last week against Colorado. Two turnovers, the Miami Hurricanes on their last three drives, so they're taking a page out of South Florida's book. They've been sporadic. They're off. The defense has played pretty consistent. Denson still in the game at quarterback for South Florida as he swings it out the hall. He bobbles it momentarily, then hangs on, and then is forced out of bounds. Well, Miami's clearly given South Florida an opportunity, and that was just great hustle by Mike Jenkins. Let's not get it wrong. Greg Olson did everything right except hold on to the football for the last five yards into the end zone. But if you're South Florida, you have to have sudden change. You need to get the offense going, because if not, you settle into a pattern. Miami will put you in third and long, and that's where they've been really been able to tee off on the South Florida offense. Well, here they are again, third and seven. Denson out of the shotgun, avoids one tackler, takes it for the first down. Number 81, Kelly Campbell, nearly took Courtney's head off. Wasn't under control, however, and ran right by him. That's the dimension that he brings to you. You can't account for the quarterback. Leon Williams is playing in that middle area, and once he vacates that area, Courtney Denson sees it and knows that all the rushers are there. Everybody's turning and running with the receiver. I'm unaccounted for. And that actually helped number 74, Chris Carruthers, with his block. Yes. 
Gain of 11 for Courtney Denson. More importantly, a big first down for South Florida. Rocky Ponton now in the game. He gains about three yards on that play as we head back to our ESPNU studios. Mike? Here at Tom Logan, Bill Calenzona. It's up 14-0 are the Bears when Joe IU was running like a madman and then eventually, oh, snap to Robert Jordan. This guy's improving, Tom. He has. I tell you what, he's making some plays with his legs and then launches one here for the TD. Look at that throw and the catch by Jordan. Cal leads 21-0, Mike and Charles. Courtney Denson has been forced to run like a madman from time to time here because of the ferocious Miami Hurricane pressure that they have been putting on him right here. Second down and six yards to go for South Florida here. 541 remaining in the second quarter. Simpson now with the ball has to reverse his field. You just can't get away from these guys. You can run, but you can't hide. Baratka, Baratka Atkins, number 98 on the stop there. But this is one of the drives, Michael, they've done more than I've seen them do tonight. And Courtney Denson may be the featured weapon. Chad Simpson doesn't get a lot of time to play in the running back position. They want to see his speed. And if he gets outside, you know he can run. 4 3 40 kind of guy. But you're right. If you run one way and you try to cut back, it's awful difficult against this Miami defense. No backs for South Florida on third and six. Ricky Potton in the slot. He's a running back to the bottom of your screen. Denson's going for him. And now it's up to Potton to get the first down. He's close, but I think just short. That's going to be awful close where the official ran in. They're going to have to bring that the chains over to take a look at that. That's a good play, though. A very good play. Uh, that, see, those are the kind of plays that get your rhythm. Courtney Denson is feeling more comfortable. They don't even have to bring the chains out for it. The other thing it's also doing, Charles, is South Florida's defense, which has been on, on the field all night long tonight, is getting well-earned rest. Again, they go to that uh, lone setback. It's Cotton. And he gives him a little more, little more quickness back there than Andre Hall. And you have Rick, Chris Carruthers that comes around and kind of one man kind of sweep. You have that guard sweep where you're almost going off tackle or OG, so to speak. And he comes around and that allows Ricky Ponton to find an off tackle play with one guy in front of him. They don't have a fullback, so they have to have someone to come around. And now they're picking up yards. That's a five-yard game. Miami's defenders on the front line. They're holding their hips. Hands on their hips. Sign of, hey, we're a little bit tired here. A little winded. Cotton stays in the game, and Hall returns the tailback. And he tries the right side of that Miami defensive line. His right side, Miami's defense's left side. Number 98, Baraka Atkins. There again, and Orion Harris as well to stuff things up for no gain. Actually, a loss of one. It'll be third and six. Orion Harris played hurt last year, had shoulder problems, has a brother that plays for the San Francisco 49ers as an offensive tackle, Kwame. So, comes from a very athletic family, Newark, Delaware. Another big third down situation for the Bull. 312 remaining here in the first half and I don't think Courtney Denson got the playoff in time Every time South Florida has had a chance to do something they've hurt themselves prior to snap false start on the offense number 68 five-yard penalty remains third down Frank Miller getting a little anxious before the play Frank Davis you know you, you move a little quick <laughs> and actually he just moved a lot quicker. Third down and 11 now. Denson gets flushed out. Orion Harris trying to chase him down, and Denson may have picked up enough for the first down. That's a dimension that Pat Julmas does not give South Florida that Courtney Denson has. Now, where the officials are marking it, he got ran out of bounds right before he got to the first down mark. This is a, a, an excellent job by Denson, who went to Auburn as a cornerback, played quarterback in high school, and this is what he can do for you. Now, he should have gone up another step, 
because what he does there is he puts himself in a fourth down situation. He had a chance to get the first down, but doesn't quite go for it. That's where you have to make sure you know where you are on the field. But South Florida is going to go for it. Well, with Courtney Denson's legs, wouldn't be surprised if they go with a Maybe. sneak. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they have to think about this one. Courtney Denson going to the uh, South Florida sideline. Should they go for it? Well, we'll find out right after this timeout. <laughs> 248 remaining to go here and ESPNU Miami 20 nothing over South Florida as we go to Mike Hall to tell us what's up at halftime. Michael. Guys, a little bit of an update for you. Alan Webb rolling out here in Kansas State and Oklahoma. KSU's down 26 points. Jordy Nelson, 73 yards for the score. Been coming up at halftime. They've half decided time. to go Plenty for more. We'll South Florida's got it. Andre Hall, huge, huge decision by Coach Jim Levitt. First down, South Florida. They keep the ball. And Hall, his biggest carry of the night. Good power blocking inside. And Andre Hall, once again, showing the versatility. Now, it's Leon Williams that has to make that play. He's not able to because of the wash of linemen and everything pushing it back. And I believe this is the first time that South Florida's had the ball in Miami territory. Ball overthrown. Another pick. Brandon Merriweather's got it. A return of 20 yards. And so Courtney Denson not immune from the interception bug. He was looking for Jesse Hester, number 87. Well, they force you into a position to make you think you have an open field. Two, two deep man under. Never saw it. Two deep man under. And if you don't throw the ball perfectly in that two deep scheme, First off, you're going to have those half safeties back there. And Brandon Merriweather just waiting. There's a seam route. He throws it behind Hester, and right behind him is Brandon Merriweather for the interception. So another, another critical turnover forced by the Miami Hurricanes, committed by South Florida. Kyle Wright going to work immediately to see if they can put some points on the board before halftime. Charlie Jones, a reserve running back on that last reception. Kyle Wright was running for his life. <laughs> Didn't have a chance to settle up and gets the ball off to Charlie well, Jones. I love the stable of backs that Miami has. Charlie Jones, James Bryant, Quadrant Hill, Darren Thomas. Of course, the main man, Tyrone Moss, who has not played for the last right couple of series. Darnell Jenkins catches that last pass by Kyle Wright steps out of bounds with 135 remaining here before halftime. What it allows Miami to do in situations like this, get the young guys a chance to come in and play, get some game experience. Third down, seven Miami. Jones going to his tight end, Greg Olson. He's got the first down, keeping the drive alive. 129 remaining. Greg Olson took a shot, yeah, he but he held on to the football. <laughs> He's walking a little gingerly back to the line. Now, if you come to Miami, you just have to know you're going to have to compete because they have so many weapons. Right wings it, and that one's picked off. Lewis Gachette. One official is saying the catch. I thought somebody was going to come in and say no, but Lewis Gachette with the nice interception. Ball tipped in the air. Only bad things happen usually when the ball is tipped in the air. Behind the receiver, Sonorius Wright, Moss, and Gachette with a nice interception, getting the hands under. Sonorius Moss trying to reach back to catch it. Gachette just a nice interception there. 
You know, this score could be a, a lot worse had Miami been able to take advantage of some other South Florida turnovers. But this second quarter, they've shot themselves in the foot as well. Timeout, Miami. First charge, timeout of the half. And Pat Julmis is back in at quarterback. He's the man who started the game and played so well last week in engineering the upset of number then number nine, Louisville, 45-14. As we send it back to the ESPNU studios and Mike Hall. Guys, coming up at halftime, Tom Lubenville and Steve Israel are going to join me. We'll talk to you about the number one team in the land getting a big-time scare. They're down 21-3 to at the half. Plus, we'll tell you Notre Dame-Purdue, a very ugly game, and other top-five action, including a top-five team losing. All that at the half. All right, thanks, Mike. Charles Arbuckle, you weren't surprised at that Southern California score initially because of the caliber of team they were playing. Arizona State had two weeks in a row. Oregon and then Arizona State having to win back to back in both of those places. Yeah. But it just shows how strong USC is this year with the ability to win in hostile environments and you know keep the streak going. And let's face it, the Pac-10 is a heck of a conference. Jewel miss on the quarterback draw. Not much work in here for South Florida. Flag on the play. A little, little post-party celebration. Dead ball. Personal foul on the defense. Number 98. 15-yard penalty. First and, You down. know, there's a lot of college football fans that say, you know, that's so Miami. <laughs> you know, they, they win, and they have some kids that can really play. And it's not, you know, the thing that Miami is known for, but they have some great ability. And I think Larry Coker keeps it in check, but he also wants his players to play with emotion. Right. You know. Well, you know, Brandon Merriweather is a perfect case in point. You know, he said, this guy brings us so much emotion. He yes. has fun out there. I want my players to have fun when yes. they're playing because that's really what the game is all about. Julmas, again, flushed in the pocket. By the time he throws the football, Ricky Ponton is about 10 yards behind the line of scrimmage. It's a completion, but it's, it goes for negative yardage. Almost all 11 defenders were able to get a hand on Ricky Ponton. Well, South Florida started the season by losing to Penn State and Happy Valley. Then they beat Florida A&M, Central Florida, then the big win over Louisville. This is clearly a step up in class. It is. And, you know, you talk about the Pac-10. The ACC is very strong this year as well. When you have Florida State, you have Miami. I mean, the list goes on. We can name all of them. But against Penn State, Penn State has shown how strong they are this year by the way they're playing. So, you know, their defense last year really won the majority of their games for them. When's the last time a Joe Pa coach team scored 44 points on a team ranked in the top 25? You know, I think the biggest thing for them is allowing Michael Robinson to just be at one position and letting those the talent that they have. Because Penn State, you think about Pennsylvania, the New Jersey area, and how they how strong they can be in that area. Mike Adamley and Charles Arbuckle with you here at the Orange Bowl, where number nine Miami leads the University of South Florida 20 to zip with 35 seconds remaining here in the first half of play. South Florida would like to get some kind of points on the board. It's not going to happen with the likes of this Miami defense. Kareem Brown, number 99. He's a backup. Well, they play <laughs> about eight, nine deep on that yeah. defensive line. And they all want to rush and get the passer. Kareem Brown, one fumble recovery on the year. Sack for him there. Well, they like this. You know, they, they, they've, they've not had a lot of sacks, and they said, hey, listen, the kind of defense we play forces other teams to throw the ball short, three-step drops. We're not going to get a lot of chance. They're loving it right now. Jewel Miss has got a strong arm. He's throwing it. This is going to be like a punt because there's another interception. LaVon Ponder, who left the game 
came Went back. to the locker room, as a matter of fact, came back. That's a great sign, and that is the end of the first half of play, and no one is happier that it's over than USF coach Jim Levitt. They definitely have to go back and regroup at halftime. Miami leads 20 to nothing as we send it to the studio. Mike Hall and company. Guys. Actually on the part of South Florida, Charles. South Florida wanted the chance to play against Miami. They wanted to experience what the being in this intensity would be like, and they haven't had a chance to do that because they've created so many turnovers in this first half. Ravon Ponder with one interception. That set up a Florida touchdown by Tyron Moss. There he goes, number 30, into the end zone. And then another fumble, another turnover. That one by Mr. Payton. This led to another Tyrone Moss touchdown run. South Florida couldn't contain himself. And then right here, probably the play of the game so far, at least the highlight of the game, Miami's tight end getting loose and then a great play by Mike Jenkins number four to strip him of the football and that's where it stands at halftime Larry Coker undoubtedly talked to his troops about uh, sloppy play themselves in the second quarter Jim Levitt probably happy as guys are still in the ball game right now although they'll have to kick off to the Hurricanes to start the third quarter and you don't want to kick to number four if you can help it Devin Hester all kind of returnability <laughs> puts you in a bad spot. He's back there along with number eight, Darnell Jenkins. Kyle Bronson deep into the Florida end zone. Jenkins takes it. He'll take a knee, and the Canes will go back to work at their own 20-yard line. Really, stats way in favor of Miami Kyle Wright the sophomore yeah. quarterback making just his fourth career start for the Canes uh, has, has looked impressive both teams with a number of turnovers sloppy first half can blame it on the rain but just concentration as well but the points off of turnovers clearly in uh, Miami's favor and that just one sack on the part of the Miami defensive line really not indicative of the kind of pressure that Jewel Miss and uh, Courtney Denson have felt all night Kane start the second half, going to work back on the ground. Tyrone Moss, gain of about three, at least second and seven, Miami. Carlton Williams on the stop for South Florida. Like it, it's Moss and Moss. You know, Tyrone gets 100 yards. Sonoris may, Moss may not get the 100 yards, but they're trying to go back and forth, and clearly Moss is, Tyrone is on his way to another 100-yard game rush. Kyle Wright running off to Quadrant Hill. Getting the chance to catch a lot of balls out of the backfield. And he's found his comfort level with the fullback position, uh, Kyle Wright, that is, and Greg Olson. Greg Olson coming into the night's game with 13 receptions. Added a 14th long run, almost a touchdown. We'll look back at this game film. And, oh, Kyle Wright gets hammered for the first time tonight. Really, really got sandwiched by that South Florida defense. And did he lose the football? Yes. Nicholas is on top of it. Stephen, Stephen Nicholas. The Bulls sack leader with four coming into tonight. And this is what South Florida did to Brian Brom last week. They were really able to get in his face and cause a lot of havoc. And this is a situation where Kyle Wright has to get rid of the football, know the pressure's coming. He holds on to it a little too long, and that's what happened to him early in the year. He was holding on to the football too long and not getting rid of it. That little inside stunt there, and that's what allowed the, uh, the sack for Nicholas, number 51. Junior from Jacksonville, Florida, and South Florida with tremendous field position. Andre Hall slices inside for a gain of two. Well, you said it best. Miami has given South Florida an opportunity to stay in this ball game. And there's nine turnovers between both ball clubs. Sooner or later, South Florida has to capitalize on a turnover from Miami. And what better chance than now? 
They capitalize on this one. It's a whole different ballgame. Second down nine from the Hurricane 30 or 26 yard line. Jewel miss wants a flag. His pass intended for his favorite receiver. That being Amari Jackson. He's looking for that flag, but clearly the official's not going to call that. And that was not a very well thrown ball by Jules. Hadn't looked comfortable tonight, Mike. He just he hadn't. Sure hasn't. Last week, we commended him on his game management skills, how he ran the game last week. Had one bad throw last week. This week, there's been a, been a lot of them. Jackie Chambers in motion. Left. He's in the slot now. Jewel Miss looking his direction. Looking for Amari Jackson who broke off this pattern. Pat was lucky that was not another interception. Yeah, everything that he's thrown has been way too high. It's been, been high. And every time that happens, the ball just seems to go through the receiver's hands. Now they may have a chance to get some points on the board. This is what they needed in South Florida. Miami very well known for their blocking ability of both punts and field goals. It's a 42 yard attempt by Kyle Bronson and it is no good. Devin Hester made him miss that kick. Hester gets in there so quick he doesn't block it but he messes with your timing if you're a kicker. Bronson normally reliable three of four this year is long 47 but he misconnected there. And so the Bulls miss out on a golden opportunity here in Miami. Miami Hurricane mascot, Sebastian getting jiggy with it. Why not? Number nine, Miami, and leads South Florida 20 to nothing. Points off turnovers tonight for Bulls. You can't say they haven't had their chances for takeaways, but they have nothing to show for. It. Jim Levitt's defense back on the field again. Flag on the play. His right hands off to the man who has been their bread and butter guy on the ground tonight, Tyrone Moss. Prior to snap, false start on the offense. Number 61, five-yard penalty, remains first down. If you're the offensive coordinator, Dan Warner, you have to be upset with how your team has played, not only turning the football over, but also the penalties that are involved. You know, you're looking for an identity, and this, this offense still isn't quite where the folks at Miami want them to be. Tony Tell, the senior out of Houston, Texas. A lot of people believe that he's a next-level player. Right going upstairs. And Darnell Jenkins can't hold on to the ball, but that's something that we know that uh, Mike Hall can do. Michael? Well, you know it, Mike, and really the question here isn't if Jeff Samarja's good, it's when will he start taking over the world? Notre Dame and Purdue, it's already 28-7. They call this guy the Maverick. Look at this move. Talk to me, Goose. It's 35-7. Samarja leads the nation in touchdown catches, Mike. No question about it. He is a special, special player. A lot of great catches today in those Purdue highlights. 35-7, I would have never thought that. 20-nothing here in Miami. Right. Throwing the ball underneath his intended receiver, Sonoris Moss. And he can't hang on. Michael Jenkins on the coverage. Nice bit of uh, defensive work by him, along with number six, Johnny Jones. Moss comes back for the football and tries to get it, but Jones is just there to knock it out. Does a very good job. They want to get the ball to Moss as much as possible. You know that. S. Moss was around here for a long time in Santana. Now his younger brother, who they think has a lot of ability. And they want to see it exposed this senior year since he's had some injury problems throughout his career, but now he's completely healthy. Third and 15, Miami. Right out of the shotgun. Intermediate range pass. And it looks like he's got the first down. He's on the South Florida sidelines. They're saying no way. Lance Leggett just reaches up and tries to grab it. And, and, and he makes the catch, but he's out of bounds. I mean, that was an outstanding grab. But that foot comes out of bounds right there. Kyle Wright's throwing motion. He gets it out there in a hurry, but it looks like he's got to really wind up to do that. 
Well, and I'm surprised. I'm glad Lance Leggett was okay because the way he went down, very awkward. So the Bulls' defense forces the Miami to punt. Jackie Chambers feels it in his own 38. But the Miami special teams, as they have all night long, have surrounded everybody. A 42-yard punt and a five-yard return. Thursday night, quarterback Cleveland McCoy leads a high-scoring South Carolina State Bulldog offense against the Norfolk State Spartans in a MEAC battle. College football primetime Thursday on ESPNU at 7.30 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. Uh, in quarterback age, Kyle Wright is still a baby. Still quite hadn't learned how to walk. And then you look at Pat Julmas, who hasn't played to his capability tonight as well. South Florida desperate to make something happen offensively. They swing it out to Hall, and that picks up about four yards before he's knocked out of bounds. That's been their biggest play so far tonight, Mike. I mean, whenever they've been able, been backed up or worried, get something going, they've just won that swing pass. First four games, they average close to 400 yards per game on total yards. Tonight, just 16. And those five turnovers certainly haven't helped. They're still not out of the ball game. <laughs> you know, Miami's allowing them to stay in, and if they can find some kind of offense, they can be right back in this ball game. Jonas maybe changed the play at the line of scrimmage. They get the ball to Hall, and there is absolutely zero zilch, nada, no running room in the middle of that Miami defense. Miami has won second down, their defense has, against South Florida's offense on second down. They've caused Great so point. many problems on second down. Normally you think first down. Well, South Florida's made some yards on first down. But this seems like this Miami defense on second down just rises to the occasion, which makes it easier on third down. Third and seven yards to go. Because what it does is you can't go to the three or four, three to five step. You have to go to a five step drop. When you're third and long. Or the shotgun formation, which Jewel Miss is in right now. He gets out of the pocket. His pump fake allows him to pick up the first down. He got his man off his feet. He didn't want Brandon Merriweather to come and hit him. So he goes, that was a nice fake. He sees that he has nowhere to go, no one to throw it to, and Brandon Merriweather at, whoops, in no man's land. See, Merriweather's the last link. Juma sees that heads-up play by him. <laughs> That's why coaches always tell her, never leave, leave your, your feet. feet. Yeah. <laughs> and if you notice, defensive linemen, they usually put the hands up, but they don't jump most of the time. Most of the time. Jumas, the inside handoff to Hall, who drags at least one hurricane player with him for a gain of about eight yards. And that's a good first down play. Let's see what they do on second down South Florida. Miami on the other hand, they've geared up. They've done very well on second down. It becomes a game of just where are you winning? They've been in the trenches for Miami. They beat the South Florida offensive line so far tonight and then hadn't allowed Andre Hall to do much or this offense much. Three wide receivers to the top of your screen. Julmas has to really stretch to reach Hall, but a good pickup on the left side of the Florida, South Florida offensive line as he picks up the first down and then some. We haven't seen the stretch play for South Florida, what they run so well. Andre Hall comes out and looks like he's real shaken up, but they have people that they can put in. Now they won the second down battle on that play, on that particular sequence of plays. Ricky Ponton, the freshman from Tampa, Florida, replacing Hall in the backfield. First and ten Bulls at the Miami 34-yard line. Jewel miss. There's that screen, and if the screenplay, the penetration, that was blown up, completely blown apart by Marcus Maxey. Well, and also, too, <laughs> you know, Marcus Maxey is right there on his defender. They're, they're coming with the blitz, Miami is, so they're getting there. Jumas has to get it off. But Marcus Maxey is never fooled. Taurus Johnson's trying to block him. He just goes right through the block. This guy waited a long time to get a chance to start around here. He played safety, had to play behind Sean Taylor and a host of other people who finally moved back outside the cornerback. And he's been pushing Devin Hester for playing time at the right cornerback position. Second down and 15. Julmans. 
And for at least <laughs> about the fourth time tonight, S.J. Green, the culprit on that play, the South Florida receiver can't hang on to the football. In that situation, there, that, that ball is high and hot, but you got to catch. You got to make a catch. And the South Florida guys are not catching the football when they have an opportunity. I guarantee you, one of the things that I think is happening out there is that South Florida receivers have been intimidated by Mi yeah. Miami's DBs. It's safe to say that. Usually when you're not catching it, you're worried about you're hearing footsteps and you're worried about those guys coming up and smashing you. Or when they're playing man, South Florida is used to running free and they have men in their hip pocket not used to running away from them. Michael Jenkins, a defensive back, is in the game offensively unless they have two number fours, and I think they maybe do. <laughs> Julmas runs out of bounds in trouble. That's Carlton Hill, their other number four that came into the game, but Julmas was going in the opposite direction and had to really run for his life being pressured by number 95, Brian Pata. We've named it. His, mentioned his name a lot tonight. Well, they Twelve lost. quarterback pressures on the season. Well, that drive, that particular sequence of plays after they got the first down, South Florida didn't win on any of the first, second, third, first, second, or third down. Yeah, it started at first and ten, and now yeah. it's fourth and twenty-six. <laughs> it's like when you cross the fifty-yard line, Miami's defense just said, "Nah, we can't have it." Brandon Baker, fifth in the country in punting, had trouble getting that one off. Ryan Moore, with the return, gets it back to about the 23-yard line, 35-yard kick, 8-yard return, back with Moore from the Orange Bowl after this timeout. South Florida Bull, not too bullish on his team's offensive performance tonight, trying to get things jacked up here Florida a loser today the number 15 Alabama Florida was rated fifth in the country Miami hoping not to fall prey to South Florida so far they have given no indication that they're going to be able to fold here because their defense has been so good and shut down South Florida's offense completely the man in the middle his name is Moss as we go back to the studios and our man Mike. Well, Mike, we'll try to get through a highlight without mentioning the name Jeff Samarja here. Purdue and Notre Dame, Brandon Kirsch looking for Dorian Bryant, and he... Samarja, Samarja, Samarja! Oh, we couldn't do it. 35-14, to 14, they just had an interception, but the next play, Notre Dame picked it right back off, so it's still a 21-point lead in the third, Mike. Okay, thanks, Mike. Back here in the Orange Bowl, Kyle Wright under extreme pressure from South Florida's relentless defense. However, he did his running north and south and came very close to the first down. In fact, he's got the first down. Well, great pressure right there by Miami native Richard Kleber getting inside and having an opportunity to get Wright, but Wright has very good ability to get out of the, out of the grasp. You can see, just beats the center. Walsh lagger. But Kyle Wright with that ability to scramble just enough to pick up that first down. Eight thirty nine remaining here in the third quarter. The Canes with a twenty to nothing lead. Moss bouncing it outside. Ben Moffitt had fourteen tackles and a sack last week against Louisville. He was the Bronco Nagurski National Defensive Player of the Week as well as the Big East player of the week that time making the tackle tripping up Tyrone Moss or it could have been more. You know Mike I'm always impressed you talk about Ben Moffat. Think about about the center what he has to do snap the ball move around a lot of times it's the nose guard it's the middle line but this that's a unsung, you don't want that job. Yeah. Most kids want to play center that's a tough job. Well you look at the world upside down between your legs and then you usually get a forearm in the face once you lift your head up. You know, the, the very good ones are just so adept at getting the ball up and then getting the hands into whoever's there. Right there, Quatrain Hill had a chance to catch that. That ball was outside, probably didn't have a very good chance to catch it. But a lot of these Miami receivers and backs, they talk about how well 
Kyle Wright throws the football. Still not, it's not translating all the time to the game. You don't see the smooth and the, even there, that's 50% tonight, which is very good for Miami. However, they struggle with this offense. Offense still isn't to where they need it to be. Kyle Wright going outside. To Akeem Jola. Incomplete. It'll be fourth down Miami. So the South Florida defense has done their job, Charles. Clearly, much a lot of time. Balls are thrown. Uh, Akeem never puts his hands on it, never gets the ball cleanly. An official right there sees the line judge is right on the spot of it. So Brian Monroe, who also does the kickoff chores, will punt as well. His first punt tonight traveled 42 yards. As he's going to top, try to top that here. It's a beautiful one. Sending Jackie Chambers back to his 13-yard line. Wise move on the part of the South Florida defender not to block the guy in the back, but the result was, <laughs> and that back and forth yeah. movement by Jackie Chambers. If you're going to make a decision, make one decision, and that's it, and stick with it. Make it quick and go with it, because if not, too much speed there. 52-yard kick and a negative or two-yard return. Tomorrow at 2 Eastern on ESPNU, it's an in-state battle as the Texas A&M women's soccer team travels to Austin, Texas to take on the Texas Lady Longhorns. Women's soccer tomorrow on ESPNU at 2 Eastern. For more information, log on to ESPNU.com. One of the, the, the worst cliches, they don't like each other very much. <laughs> we don't say that about the te Texas you know, and Texas It's probably <laughs> true, yeah. <laughs> They hate each other. Being from Texas, I can, yeah, I can attest know, to that. <laughs> they take their soccer seriously down there. Yeah. <laughs> they take the that's Longhorn real. and the that's Aggie real. rivalry seriously. <laughs> that's going to come back. Yeah. I like how the officials have gotten adept at throwing the flag in the direction of the player. Getting a lot of practice tonight, that's for sure. The quality of play has greatly deteriorated here in the second half of play. Jim Levitt st strutting down the uh, South Florida sideline. Side Shouldn't say strutting, but just uh... holding on the offense. Number 61. Penalties decline. Second down. <laughs> Miami says they're not going to take it. They're not going to accept it. Second down. John Miller, the center. We talked about how tough it is to play the center position. Pat Jolman still in and quarterback. Give us the Hall, who is every single one of the yards that he has gained tonight have been extremely tough. That's two weeks in a row because last week he had the same kind of deal with Louisville. They really weren't going to allow him to beat him. And he, played, he dislocated about three fingers on his right hand. I think uh, against Penn State. So he's played with some banged up fingers. Got a chance to meet him a few weeks ago and uh, last week and shake his hand and he could barely really shake your hand like he wanted to. So you got to imagine when you're playing the game and you're running with the football how difficult that is. Another big first down for South Florida. Can they convert? Julius out of the shotgun going quickly across the middle. Hey, and guess what? I don't even think Amari Jackson had a chance to even catch that football. Marcus Maxey, the closing speed underneath. Whenever you have protection and help on the top, you don't worry so much about the guy coming, and you can cut in front of him. You see, when the linebacker clears like that, that means it's man. So they're playing man underneath. They know they have help back. So all Marcus Maxey has to do is go over. You got to keep running. If you throw a ball in the spot, a, a, a defender can intercept it. And what a difference a week makes is that last graphic. Shows it for Amari Jackson. His game started out all wrong when he dropped that first pass that was in his hands. Brandon Baker's kick. Shank to the left, but he had at least one man in his face. Looking for a call. He's not going to get it. Miami's going to get the ball back. 631 remaining here in the third quarter from the Orange Bowl here on ESPNU. Miami Hurricane fans will never forget Bernie Kosar. He's a member of the Ring of Honor here at the Orange Bowl and a quarterback who led the Canes to a national championship in his first year as a starter. Kyle Wright would like 
the same thing to happen to him. Well, he's going to try to play like Kozar. That ball started to sail on him and waffle, and he never had a chance to hit his receiver, Cinerus Moss. Yeah, that's an opportunity there you don't get often. It's Cinerus Moss, clearly with the speed and the ability to get down the field. Kyle Wright doesn't get the ball out there. He just throws it and kind of dies. Good coverage by Mike Jenkins. Bad throw by Kyle Wright. But one of the things in talking to Larry Coker when we talked to him yesterday, one of the things that he said is that most quarterbacks in the past, like a Bernie Kozar or Vinny Tuscaverdi, they played later in their career. They're having to play guys soon. Look out from behind. Whoa. This one badly underthrown, and it's almost picked off by Louis Gachette. Pressure from the backside. Well, Louis Gachette in his own <laughs> man. I think Carlton Williams broke the play. John up. John Simmons, number 45, and he gets sandwiched. Number 59, Ben Moffitt, the other bull to meet right in the backfield. And that was an opportunity. Ball in the air like that. South Florida defenders in the backfield knocked the ball away from each other. So now it's third and ten for the Hurricanes, who have done absolutely nothing on offense here in the second half. Right now in trouble. He stumbles. He falls. Jason Allen had something to do with that. Number 16 for South Florida. Well, if Miami's offense plays like this, there's no, you know, the national championship, you're just talking about getting through the ACC. <laughs> and they're really getting to him. You know, this is the same thing that happened last week against Louisville. The South Florida Bulls will get to you. Miami's offense, as good as they are, they can still be bad in protection. Wright has been hit, hurried, and sacked. And a whole lot of other things we don't even want to get into right now. But the only problem is that South Florida has been able to do nothing on offense. We'll take a look at the Dr. Pepper ACC standings. Va Tech. 3-0 in conference play, and obviously the clear-cut favorite to win not just the Coastal Division, but the entire ACC. Miami at 1-1, one one, having lost to Florida State in their opener on the road in Tallahassee, 10-7. And the, the Seminoles obviously leading the uh, Atlantic Division with a perfect 3-0 conference record. So South Florida gets another chance. Julius running the option this time, carrying himself. That's a little wrinkle. One man we haven't heard from tonight is 85, number 85, Derek Carter, their tight end. And you would think it with this dink and dunk kind of short yardage offense that they're playing tonight that they might want to hit the tight end a little bit. Well, the one thing that they can't do with him, and, and we talked about it at the break, is getting him involved. But the other side of it is if he gets out in routes, that takes away from your protection. Max protection, right. You know, so they're, they're really caught in a quandary of do we run the tight end in the routes or do we keep him in to make sure he protects. Second down and six, Chad Simpson in the game now for Andre Hall. He gets the ball. He's going right and he's going nowhere. In fact, he loses two. And we go back to Mike Hall in the studio. Well, from a 20-point difference here to a zero-point difference, Nevada and San Jose State late in the fourth. Wolfpack's Jeff Rowe to Robert Hubbard. Goulet catches around the 25 and keeps going. By the way, Mike and Charles, Middle Tennessee State wins over Vanderbilt 17-15, to so Vanderbilt's Rose Bowl dream is over. How about Middle Tennessee State? Wow. wow. That's, that's almost as epic as last week, probably. Maybe even more so. Another third and long for South Florida. Julius has got the half and feet. They get him nowhere. Kareem Brown. Uh-uh. Not, not my house, not anybody's house, and not with me on the job. That second down battle has put Miami in a situation where they can come on third down and just take care of business. They put you in a bad position and don't allow you to do the things you want to do. And S.J. Green, a wide receiver, is down on the ground for Miami. And it looks much like, or for South Florida, much like the scene we saw last week at Raymond James Stadium. Guys, when they usually stretch that leg out like that and keep their knee locked, they probably have a cramp. They had a lot of those last week, and I think Jim Levitt was worried about that again happening down here in, in Miami. 
this guy, I mean, they were in the second half, they had so many people, you, you kind of lost count of how many folks actually went off the field with cramps. And he, he's one of those motivators. I mean, he'll do anything to get his guys fired up. I don't know what he can do at this point, uh, but he, he smashes guys in their helmets. He just, he'll take a sledgehammer to other helmets. He'll use any kind of motivational tool. The problem is his players aren't as motivated on the field to do the things that he wants them to do tonight. He's just got a very solid mind. I mean, their defense is just so fast and strong. It, it makes it tough for any offense to come in here and do anything. Brandon Baker's right leg is getting a workout tonight as the punter for South Florida. And he has been just surrounded by Miami Hurricanes. But what a punt all the way back to the 10 yard line. He might have out kicked his coverage. There's a flag on the play. 85 Ryan Moore, the return man on that one. Baker came into this game fifth in the country in punting, and that one went 65 yards. With a 15-yard return, but a point of return. Nickel block in the back. Number 80. Penalty being forced from the spot of the foul. At the distance to the goal. First down. That's a booming punt. And Ryan Moore trying to pick that up, and you can see the, the block in the back right there in the screen. Akeem Jala, he's gonna, you know, the guy gets out in front of him, you're trying to protect him. You see right there, pushes him just enough to knock him down. The that gun wasn't even even close, though. You know? Yeah, that the gunner is right there. You can see both the guy's <laughs> number, and you have no chance to get to even your your one hand in front of his one shoulder pad. Forget about it. Yeah. Well, I'll tell you what, if I'm a South. Florida Bull defender. I say let's take matters into our own hand and create a turnover deep in their own territory. And Tyrone if, Moss is not going to let that happen. <laughs> and if you're Miami, you say give it to T. Moss down there because you know the offensive line can't protect very well, but they can run the football. Talk about that center position. You come off and you have that big guard pulling him around right there, Tyler McNeese, and on the end, the edge blocking. So what that does is you have two people that can soften the defense enough for Tyrone Moss to come in there and do his damage. And you saw number 45, the fullback, James Bryant, pummel his man as well, bring him to the ground. He blocked there. First and 10, Miami, they get it out. Little breathing room out to the their own 13-yard line. Give us to Moss again. Same play. Mike Adamley and Charles Arbuckle here in the Orange Bowl. 2.48 remaining to go here in the third quarter of play. The ninth-ranked Hurricanes of Miami leading South Florida 20 to nothing. Look at that. You want to know what happens in a, in a ball game? Look at that. One in the first. You see one sack allowed for the night. Kyle Wright, meanwhile, has the Miami quarterback making just his fourth career start. He has felt plenty of heat himself tonight. Does a nice job of getting the ball out to Ryan Moore. Gain of about seven. Moore, a junior from Orlando, Florida. You know, that's what's so surprising about this Miami offense, though, with all the weapons that they have, they still just haven't quite reached the level of play that you expect. Haven't found that that synchronization. Yeah. One of the things they've been able to do is you look at Moore's numbers over the you know 2003 when he he was huge. And the, the drop off last year. One of the things that Kyle Wright has done is he's hitting more receivers as he gets more experience. This time he goes underneath. Sonoris Moss with the reception and the first down. You almost got a glimpse of how fast Moss can be right there. Last week against Colorado, five receptions, 111 yards, one touchdown, one for 59 yards. But that underneath, his yards after catch ability, just like his older brother, able to make yard, make big plays. You just stop, spin inside. You see the defenders coming over the top trying to get to you. Now you have the speed by Steven Nicholas. If he doesn't get there, Moss might still be running. Ben Moffat, the stellar middle linebacker for the Bulls, the guy overrunning that play. And that'll happen a lot when you have a speedy guy like Moss. You, you want to get to the point where he's at, but then all of a sudden he's gone. 
you know, coaches always tell you, run to where you think he's going to be as opposed to where he is. But if you go to where you think he's going to be and he makes one little move, you miss it. Well, the Bulls have had trouble gathering, like that stone gathering moss, either Tyrone or Sonoris. Second and 10, Miami. The waning moments of the third quarter of play here in the Orange Bowl. Well, he has run most of his yards have come strictly between the tackles straight ahead. And he doesn't waste time on the sideline. He's going to go downhill. He's a downhill runner. I want to see him with the stretch play because I think if you give him a chance to cut back, he looks like he would make some nice moves or be able to cut it back quickly and, and get downhill for you. That's the end of the third quarter here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. Number nine Hurricanes doing it on offense and hanging tough on defense. 20 to nothing, fourth quarter just ahead on ESPNU. Number nine Miami leading South Florida 20 to nothing as we start the fourth quarter of play. Miami has the ball at their own 41 yard line the man Kyle Wright making his fourth career start at quarterback for the Hurricanes one of the great things about him is his fourth quarter production it is so much better than what happens in quarters one two and three his quarterback rating 161.7 he hasn't thrown an interception he absolutely excels in the fourth quarter and overtime as he did in that Clemson game I think if you look at the yards of production also for Tyrone Moss in the fourth quarter. He wears defenses out. <laughs> and you can see why. I mean, he, he, his offensive linemen love to block for him because they know he will get some positive yards. Well, he's only 5'9", but on that frame, he packs 220 pounds, and it's all muscle. And this guy is, is very, very, he's built low to the ground, and he's tough to bring down. He is the new prototype back that you see, not just at this level, but in the NFL as well. Right. Looking for Ryan Moore down the left sideline. Nice coverage by Carlton Will Williams and Duan Brown. Flag on the play. Away from the play. Tyrone Moss in action there getting that touchdown. Good inside running. He seems to accelerate when he gets to the hole, Mike. He sees where he's going to go and then just goes off and finds the hole. And he'll look people up, too. Yeah, he will. And you can see him look a couple of people up there that didn't want any part of him. <laughs> <laughs> Be afraid. Be very, very afraid. afraid. 17 carries tonight, 82 yards. And he has made the South Florida defense pay. Just gives you a lot of options when you're averaging five yards, close to five yards to carry because your offensive playbook opens up. Now he's running out of the I formation. Trying to bounce it outside. Swarming nice defense on the part of <laughs> the South Florida Bulls. He had to work for that just to get back to the line of scrimmage. Good defense by South Florida, but a good run. I mean, they only lose one yard on that when it should be a six yard loss. You can't say enough about the South Florida defense. They fly to the football. Patrick St. Louis, one of them, Ben Moffitt, Stephen Nicholas, their front seven, which had such an outstanding game last week. They're doing, they're doing their job. They're doing everything their coaching staff asked them to do against this offense tonight. It's, it's their offense that hasn't held up their share of the bargain. Kyle Wright. Making all the right moves just to get to the line of scrimmage. And I don't, I don't think Larry Coker wants to see his, his young quarterback on the line like that tonight. No, you don't want to be exposed like that. You see those guys from, from South Florida really flying to the football. And you're exposing your quarterback to hits you don't really need him to be exposed to. I mean, waiting in the wings, they're a pair of freshmen. They're probably pretty good. I haven't seen him play Kirby Freeman and... Trey Berkland, but this is the guy you're trying to groom as your your guy for the future, if not the present. Third and five for Kyle and company. Yeah. 
He's got time. <laughs> Greg Olson. Akeem Jola bobbled the football, couldn't catch it, but Greg Olson right there for the reception. Oh, he's selling it, too. Yeah. Hey, wait a minute. I had the first down. Yeah. Give me the spot. <laughs> Give me the spot. You know, good receivers are always around the football, so Akeem Jala is not going to make this catch here. The ball goes in the air. Good, de good defense, but look at Greg Olson. And look, he's going to sell it. Get the ball up. As soon as you catch it, you're taught as a receiver. Pull it up he right might, away. And they may look at this one. Very good tight end for, for Miami. It's one of those guys that, you know, along the lines of the Shockies that they've had through here, and Kellen Winslow, and, and before I even was in school, had, you know, just outstanding tight end play at the school. Brian Monroe's punt bounces at the one, takes a hurricane bounce, and it's downed at the three yard line. A punt of 35 yards, and so South Florida will start deep in their own territory when we come back. Miami used to be in the, a uh, the Big East, and now they're in the ACC. South Florida used to be in Conference USA, and now they are in the Big East. And take a look at the Big East standings. The Mountaineers 4-1 and one overall, 1-0 one oh in conference play. They lost to number three Virginia Tech today. The Mountaineers 34 17. Pat Julmas trying to engineer a comeback, and uh, he's just lucky if he can find a wide receiver who's open right now. Find one that'll catch the football as well. That one intended for Johnny Payton. He's had a share of the drops, he's as has Amari Jackson. Good defense by the by the defensive line getting their hands getting their hands up we talked about not jumping there you go he, he jumps but good results right there Dwayne Hendricks yeah, Dwayne Hendricks, one of, another one of the backups coming in getting an opportunity to wreak some havoc with this South Florida offense and he must be pretty good because Miami doesn't have to go far to get talent but uh, Hendricks is from New Jersey <laughs> Merriweather badly wanted that interception S.J. Green either didn't run the right route or Pat Dulmas just thought he was going to stop. And Brandon Merriweather looked like he was a receiver on that play. You know, Brandon is he's listed as six feet. He's probably only about 5'11", 190, but he plays like a guy, and he thinks he's a guy who's 6'2", 230. He hurts himself when he hits people. But, you know, it doesn't hurt to have guys like Ed Reed and Sean Taylor who kind of mentor him. Take yeah, they him under the wings. They work out here. They're in the gym at 6 o'clock in the morning in the offseason, but also having him watch a lot of film so he understands how to play the game. And, and the good thing about Brandon, he sought them out. Jewel missed. His arm was hit as he was throwing the football. I think number 57 was in his face. You know, that was the one thing. Javon Natten. <laughs> yeah, he had so much pressure. You know, you can talk about the guys from the past, but at Miami, every position has tradition. I mean, you think about that just once again. Big men getting in your, in your face. You look at the D-line, and you can, the list is endless of who's there. Warren Sapp, you know, Jerome Brown, a number of players up front that could play the game linebacker another long list of guys but the key is these guys carving out a niche for themselves watch out here because Ryan Moore is at his at the South Florida 41 yard line and Brandon Baker has to punt from deep in his own end zone Moore calls for the fair catch or does he yeah where are you going pal <laughs> 40 yard punt so good field position once again for the Miami Hurricanes I, I didn't mean it. I wanted to take it back. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a minute. Did he signal for a fair catch? Yeah. Well, yeah that yeah. looked like one to me. No, I was just swatting a fly. No. Just getting a little the, rain out the of my sun eye. Was in my eye. <laughs> <laughs> the lights were there. <laughs> Neither team has scored here in the second half. Well, and clearly the South Florida coaches won a penalty for him calling for the fair catch and then taking off running. <laughs> 12-21 remaining here in the fourth and final quarter of play. Jim Levin says, come on, a guy was... Yeah, he can't call it. Can't and do run. that. Can't have it both he ways. Can have it in the background. 
Moss. Boy, how did he get through that hole? It's not Moss. It's Charlie Jones, number 34, one of the capable backups that play that running back position for floor, for uh, Miami. You know, he's got some quicks. Rock, skate, roll, bounce. You know, skating rink when we were young. Well, this yeah. one looks like what he's doing. Roller skating is, is awesome. And it looks like Charlie Jones did a little bit of it. And, and for some of those kids that I'm, I'm referencing, that's what we used to do when we were growing up. Right? But he looks like he's on skates because he's just moving through there. Yeah. <laughs> All those moves made going forward. If you're a young running back, that's something that you need to learn. Charlie Jones getting the ball again. And Miami's done a great job, especially their fullback, James Bryant, number 45. He has opened up a lot of holes tonight for Jones and Tyrone Moss, too. A lot of teams have gone away from using the fullback as an ISO lead blocker, but Miami still has Quatrin Hill. They have James Bryant. They, they allow, that allows, look, 45 going out there creating some space, but also, too, the ball comes loose, and then who gets it? Big 72, Andrew Bain. <laughs> look, what look, I, he's still yeah, running. look what I found. <laughs> that looked like a rugby scrum. Yeah. Coach, next week I want to play fullback. All right. The Darnell Jenkins. Knocked out of bounds by Michael Jenkins, number four. Otherwise, it had been six Miami. Well, if you're going to talk about it, if you're South Florida, clearly their defense has done a very good job, but offensively, they didn't show up tonight. And look at the passing yards. I mean, that's just, you're not going to win a ball game with 24 passing yards. And also equate some of the sack yardage and yards that you're losing at, but still, that's not going to help you win in, in the, at the Orange Bowl. I think Jim Levitt would have taken those stats. He said, not the stats for his team, but for our defense holds them to 167 yards passing. He might take that. Here's Charlie Jones again. Looking like Charles Arbuckle used to look like when he was on the sand lots before he became a tight end. Yeah, everybody wants to play running back, but <laughs> this is a prime example of why a lot of guys don't play. Now, Charlie Jones is running well, but when they take those shots, let's see how he comes back. He's going to come back strong, I'm sure, because he's got hit hard, but everybody that says they want to want to play the running back position you got to be ready to take those shots too. great block by Tony Tella and Eric Winston number 74 and 61 respectively Tony Tella 61 Eric Winston 74 flags on the play South Florida with a man down that's Johnny Jones pass interference on the defense, number 21. The infraction happened in the end zone. The ball be placed at the two-yard line. Just like they were a week ago, Trey First Williams, goal. the offender there. Well, he's matched up against Lance Leggett, who has the height advantage on him. And clearly pushes off Lance Leggett trying to go up and get the ball. Lance Leggett has struggled. They want to see him be more productive this year, and that's where you can use his, his height effectively. Trey may not have needed to do that because it looks like he was on his way out of bounds anyway. But if you're going to throw a, a fade pattern like that, Kyle Wright threw it in the right right place. That's for sure. He's Tonight's game summary: Kyle Wright making just his fourth career start. Not terribly effective, but effective enough. Amari Jackson completely shut down, not a factor in this game. And South Florida has allowed their quarterback to be sacked four times tonight, and even more egregious than that, the five turnovers. Yeah. And, you know, Amari Jackson, I look at that point because he drops a pass in that first drive and he never seemed to have gotten comfortable again. And then the turnovers. Anytime you give Miami a short field, they're going to take advantage of it. If you don't have those turnovers, then maybe you have a closer game. However, their offense, South Florida, has just been very, very poor tonight. And I said it before, I'll say it again. Those Miami defensive backs, where they get you looking and thinking twice about catching that football. Charlie Jones gets caught in his own backfield. The South Florida defenders. Battling valiantly, Ben Moffitt, number 59. 
And Mike, they just, it's, it's amazing to find the backs that they do because they all look the same. They all yeah, they? low and went, <laughs> went fast and built the same exact way. If you just put them all together, you would see Charlie Jones, Tyrone Moss, a little bit bigger in some areas, but still about the same size. You know, it reminded me of all the old Nebraska tailbacks. Yeah. You know, they, they, were, they looked like the they, came, they came out of an assembly line. Yeah. They were all 6'1", <laughs> They went. They had these backs that they just put through this assembly line. <laughs> Miami's done a better job inside the red zone tonight. Here's Charlie Jones trying to take a couple of tacklers into the end zone with him. In the past, Tyrone Moss now back in the game. But look how close in <laughs> stature they are. You know, this defense is tired, so that's a smart move. Tyrone Moss has been yeah. on the bench. Now, I know Charlie Jones doesn't want to have that. He wants to score after this drive, and he's helped him get down this close. But Tyrone Moss has another chance to get that football in. Now, you, can, you know, he's going to celebrate Charlie Jones. He's not going to be upset, but he's still going to say, uh, you know, all of that it's, it's, called, it's called deuce pain, man. He said, yeah, I'm a sophomore, Tyrone's a junior. Yeah. Tyrone looking for a touchdown number three tonight. Patrick Lewis, I believe. No, he's not there. Good tackle. Yeah, Steven, Steven Nicholas submarined him at the point of attack. And Tavarius Robinson also. Yeah, there. number 46. Well, he showed us something last week, did Nicholas, and showing us something again tonight. There he is, 51 yeah. Bing. Yeah, coming over, sliding over from that linebacker position. Ben Moffitt gets blocked out by Bryant, James Bryant, and you have to have a fill and flow guy. And right there, that's a good opportunity. So, timeout Miami. That was their eighth play. Let's see what they're going to do when we return to the Orange Bowl here on ESPNU. Miami band on its feet because the Hurricanes are knocking on South Florida's door. Fourth and one. They're going to go for it here. This would put an end to any upset thoughts on the part of South Florida. Should they score, Tyrone Moss does his third of the game. And maybe under other circumstances with 825 remaining in the fourth quarter, you'd say, well, it's not over yet, but this one pretty much is over. Seems like every time Tyrone Moss gets a chance to cut back, he does a very good job with it and finds that hole. They like to run a lot, a lot of ISO lead, but whenever he has that chance to cut back, especially on the goal line, he finds the end zone. You see there, 17 career rushing touchdowns, three tonight. We'll get some consideration for ACC Offensive Player of the Week, that's for sure. John Petty on to attempt the extra point. It is up. It is good that Miami scoring drive eight plays 44 yards time of possession three minutes and 56 seconds and we go back to the studio Mike Hall checking out BYU and San Diego State Mike six yards out Kevin O'Connell says me winning isn't you do nice grammar seven to nothing they have an early lead here in the second quarter Mike all right thank you Mike tonight's attendance here at the Orange Bowl started out at 58 308 it's so we take another look at Tyrone Moss his third touchdown of the night well he gets in there behind the lead blocker but then he just makes one cut doesn't make a lot doesn't take a lot of time but you know sees James Bryan out in front there's clearly they overloaded that side Andrew Bain and he can see right there at the point of attack okay I have a little room here and he cuts back perfectly on that Miami doesn't run a lot of stretch plays but you can see the vision that he has that he could have the capability if he ran stretch. And when I say stretch, he has two or three different options, Mike, where he can work outside, either stay, bounce it outside, stay inside, or cut all the way back. Touchdown runs of 19 and a pair of one yard, but really doesn't tell the story of how dominant he has been. That last scoring drive we talked about at eight plays, 44 yards, 356 off the clock. 27 nothing hurricanes that won't do anything to damage their ranking in the polls at number nine they might even move up a notch or two Brian Monroe he with the strong leg driving Jackie Chambers back to his own goal line across the 10 and out to the 20 and that's about the longest 
return of any kind, punt or kickoff that South Florida has had tonight because as impressive as Miami's defense has been, so has been their special teams. A gain of 21 on that kickoff return by Chambers. You have guys chomping at the bit, mostly linebackers, defensive backs, that don't get a chance to play. So whenever they get that one opportunity to run down, bust a wedge, make a big hit, they're going to get that opportunity until they can step in and play on the defensive yeah. side. Mike Adamley and Charles Arbuckle here at the Orange Bowl in Miami. 8-17 to go here in the fourth and final quarter. College football prime time. And it has been all Miami, especially Tyrone Moss and their great pursuing hitting defense. Pat Julmas has struggled all night long. He's all alone here, though, on that naked bootleg. Maybe the biggest offensive game they've had tonight. A nice play by Pat Jolmus. And, and Miami's defense was clearly faked out. They faked the ball to Chad Simpson. And look at all the defenders go over there. No one in contain. Even <laughs> the camera people are kind of fooled because he does such a great job of faking. That's part of that option play. They can spread you out. And if he wants to hand it off to Chad Simpson, fine. If not, he comes around and has opportunities on the back side. Now five wide receivers, no running back for South Florida. They are clearly in the hurry-up mode right now. And finally, a pass reception. Johnny Payton picks up the first down. And it was a catchable ball. I mean, it was put where he needed to catch it. Catchable, you know. exactly. You can't throw every ball perfect, so there's been times where his receivers haven't made catches and he's been at fault for throwing the ball a little high. Jewel miss out of the shotgun, rolling right and pressured again. And picking up positive yardage and another first down inside the Miami 30. We have some backups now. Vegas Franklin chasing them around. Number 97. Yeah, Vegas playing the, the right end position. You know, he's 47, so a bunch of guys in there now trying to get after him. Ryan Anderson, 97, was on the chase as well. Ricky Ponton now. Maybe a yard on second down. The clock ticking away here in the fourth and final quarter. The defense did the job that they were enlisted to do tonight against this South Florida team offensively if you look at Miami you have to wonder how well will they be when they get into the, the depths of ACC play because Kyle Wright although he only threw one interception wasn't very comfortable back there still pressure there's some film work they need to do in South Florida clearly want to get their receivers to catch the ball but also Julius to throw it more effectively running back there on the uh, quarterback draw upcoming games for Miami they've got the Duke Blue Devils here at home next weekend and then I, I don't know why they still scheduled Temple they were I really feel feel for that program Georgia then Tech. it's Georgia Tech North Carolina Vatek you know which Georgia Tech team is going to show up I mean Reggie Ball coming back from the viral meningitis and they struggled mightily against Virginia Tech last week Look at Ch Chad Simpson, number 20, and number 96 jawing at each other. Well, Brian, <laughs> you know, there's a lot of talking going on between those two. And Willie Williams and Chad Simpson are cousins. So I guess he said he had to bring something for his cousin. 96 is Woody George, who takes up a lot of space in the middle is their sort of defensive tackle and nose guard. Brian Patton, number 95 in there. And there's a pass over the middle. Jesse Hester, no relation to Devin. But his dad and I played together in Indiana Indianapolis. Jesse Hester Sr. Senior, right? Runs just like him. <laughs> 
Florida State player, Jesse Hester. Now here you see South Florida finally getting the rhythm. Miami has clearly softened up. They're playing more of a conventional cover too, not playing the man coverage with the pressure that they like to bring. And it's allowing passing lanes, more of a prevent type of defense. If you want to call it that. Six minutes remaining here in the fourth quarter. Jewel Miss going up top. Going to have a, I think, a defensive interference penalty on Devin Hester, who had his back completely turned to Jewel Miss. You know, Amari Jackson, but maybe too little, too late. Pass interference on the defense, number four. Penalty decline. Touchdown is good. Well, Johnny Payton with the Johnny Payton position. with the, the catch. Yeah, and, and, and he has struggled early on. Devin Hester, as good as he is, still has some technique things he needs to work on. Amari Jackson was open deep earlier in the game against him. Still, you know, so still trying to learn the cornerback position at the college level. And then learning how to play against yeah. this is going to happen a lot, you know. 5'11 cornerback against a six foot five inch wide receiver. That's how it's done. South Florida finally on the board here in the fourth quarter. With 5.56 remaining in the fourth quarter, South Florida has finally gotten on the board against number nine, Miami. Much to Jim Levitt's relief. Eight plays, 78 yards, two minutes and 29 seconds. The touchdown pass to. Peyton, 14 yards from Pat Julmus on the pass interference call against Devin Hester. Didn't matter. And now Miami called a timeout in preparation for what in all likelihood should be an onside kick. With those hands team out there, guys that are that can catch the, the football. The ESPN College Football Encyclopedia is the biggest, richest reference guide ever published on the history of college football. It's got profiles, box scores, Heisman race breakdowns, records and statistical leaders, fight song lyrics of all 119 Division I programs, the Ivy Leagues, and most prominent historically black colleges dating back to 1869. Even Ian Charles The College Football Encyclopedia has it all. You and me are yeah. in the college football so encyclopedia. I we played like Ag in the 1870s. We so. did. <laughs> Guess what? It's available now at your local bookstore. I, I needed a forklift to take it out of the uh, yeah. college football <laughs> production meetings we had earlier this year. <laughs> it it is a tome. How, isn't it amazing how fast the game changes in 10, 15, 20 years. I mean, it stays the same, but just some of the, the things that they're doing in college is even different than when you and I played. Or, well, the specialization yes. of the game is, is definitely I mean. one thing. That's for sure. There's the predicted onside kick. Miami having a tough time handling the football. It rolls out of bounds. Ryan Morgan, I know, got a free kick out of bounds on South Florida. Ball be placed at the spot where the ball went out. First 10. <laughs> uh, and Ryan Moore did the right thing by allowing the ball just to go out of bounds. Yeah. But that's why you put your hands team in because those guys are used to fielding, touching the football. They take all the linebackers out because they're former wannabe tight ends that <laughs> and can't catch. And their fingers are pointing in all different directions. <laughs> the DBs are even worse. They're, they're wide receivers in their mind. <laughs> never changes Let those guys say the same things about us <laughs> so Miami gets the ball back at their 36 yard line and their mission right now at least for Kyle Wright and company eat up clock and they're going to do just that Darren Thomas yet another outstanding back in a stable of great backs now he's the smaller of all the backs at 5'9 190 but shows that speed. Gramercy, Louisiana. 
Good blocking right there. James yeah. Bryant gets a block. All, and also, look all at, night long, look, yeah. Look, look at those blocks inside. Wolf Schlager at number 78. Big block. Tony Teller, Rashad Butler. Reserve Louisiana. Freshman. He knows he's got a long order. A lot of people in front of him, but still get a chance to come here and play in front of the pack houses. And Different kind of running back, and after getting pounded by Tyrone Moss and Charlie Jones, wide body backs, now they got this the fastball, the speedball comes in there. Well, they really didn't have to do it a, a lot in the second half. They had such a big lead, but one of the things that Larry Coker was saying that he wanted to see his backs in pass protection do a much better job, all of them. And, that, and that's one of the things that Dan Warner, he said, if we don't get good pass protection, we, we get our quarterback killed. And Tyrone Moss is not, I'll, I'll sit him if he doesn't do the job there. Now, you, you like his running game, but he has to be able in pass pro to pick up blitzing linebackers or defensive ends for that nature. Give again to Thomas. He gets stuffed at the line of scrimmage. Stephen Nicholas, first to reach him. Terrence Royal, also there, number 56 for South Florida. Their defense has done a wonderful job tonight. No question about that, Charles. Well, and I think, Mike, if you look at South Florida, you still see the way they've gotten better is that they've come down and recruited in Miami. They used to have one coach that would recruit this area. Now they have three coaches that come in and really get those. That's why they have 18 kids from the, the, the counties that make up Miami. Dade and Broward County. You know, he knows that Miami is going to gobble up most of the most of the blue chippers. That flat pass incomplete. Yeah, Jim Levitt knows that Miami is going to get most of the blue chippers, yeah. but his his whole idea is, is his whole approach is, hey guys, if it doesn't work out at Coral Gables, yeah. think of us. <laughs> Yeah. We'll, we'll, we'll take you, that's for sure. <laughs> the only coach South Florida has ever had, Jim Levitt, and what a job he's done. Nine years ago, they, they operated out of a, a trailer. They yeah. had no practice facility, no practice field, no secretaries. It's a great story because you think of where they play now, Raymond James Stadium, the facility that they built there, and you can see why kids want to go to South Florida. Also, with you look at Miami, you know, that, that tradition, the, the understanding of, hey, if I go to Miami and I play well, I have a chance to get to the next level. And there is exposure all the time by the players that have come before you. Dead ball, the lay of game on the offense. But it's kind of funny. South Florida is really north <laughs> in the middle. <laughs> South Florida Bulls, 91 players from this uh, wonderfully rich football state. 92% of the team are from Florida. <laughs> you know, and part of it, part of it is they used to have a, a, a recruiting budget of about $45,000, maybe less than that. You yeah, know, you yeah. couldn't go anyplace else. And that's why you see so many Tampa, St. Pete players in that area. Um, and now they've started to branch out in other areas. Well, from what we've seen the last two weeks, there's no doubt in my mind, Charles, that Jim Levitt is going to make this a, a powerful, powerful program. And the fact that they're in the Big East Conference now and they're a, a, a conference that's affiliated with the Bowl Championship Series is going to make it just the more attractive to prospective recruits. You talk about all those other things we just said, and the bottom line is if kids know that they can play for a potential BCS Bowl or a national championship. That makes South Florida more intriguing. For Miami, you know you, you come to Miami to play for the tradition, but also the championships as well, and a chance to go to the next level. That last punt by Brian Monroe traveled 38 yards, an eight yard return, and Miami, or South Florida, will put the ball in play at their own 10 yard line. Again, field position has not been kind to South Florida. Merriweather had to call a timeout. Brandon Merriweather, you saw that they didn't have enough players what, weren't in the right setup. Timeout. And he, he meant to make the timeout call. It's a second charge timeout. And that's a heads up play by the strong safety. Glenn Cook wasn't on the field, and Brandon Merriweather, the safeties are normally the guys that make the call. They look and see how many people. 
are on the field and, and he saw that and said hey we got to get one more guy out here we only have 10. You know with all the talk of, of Jim Levitt and what he's done all Larry Coker has done. He's the winningest coach in the country since 2001 when he was named the head coach. And look where this is in his first 53 games his winning percentage. He's up there with people if they if we were to carve a, a, a all in the Hall a, of Fame a Mount Rushmore <laughs> of, of college coaches certainly Bud Wilkinson would be there too. Yeah, Frank Leahy yeah. would be there. Eddie Robinson from Grambling Barry Switzer the all time uh, leader in winning percentage. Everybody knows about his programs at Oklahoma Bud Wilkinson. Those are all Hall of Fame coaches. Man, yeah. I mean that's, a, that's greatness. But to that point the fans here have been so spoiled by the success of Miami that it makes it tough for a guy like Larry Coker to come in and win right. a national championship but then struggle to get back on that that level that they expect here in Miami national championships in 1983 87 89 1991 and 2001 and five years is too long for Kane fans to wait They're they're accustomed to greatness you're right Charles but let's think if it happens Fairly, I mean, it hasn't been that long. I mean, in the early 80s is when Miami really came onto the scene. Right. But you're so used to seeing and hearing about Miami that you, th you think they've been there for since the 50s, and that's not the not case. Not true. Even though they had players like George Myra and Ted Hendricks and Otis Anderson. I mean, they've had some guys that were very, very great players. Ted Hendricks. I think you said his name. But I think you look at Florida State, the same kind of rise. It's interesting how quickly these teams, the last few decades, have really come on strong and just had a stranglehold on the top 10, being in BCS games and playing for national championships, even if they don't make it there every year. Pat Jolmus for the umpteenth time tonight, running for his life. Oh! There's a there's a big boy hit. <laughs> you know, receivers don't get a chance often to make big hits. Darren Halliburton comes back and peels back. Number 88. Here he comes. Boom. Nice shot. Gets his head in front. Bruce Johnson head will be on the swivel next time he sees the quarterback <laughs> running around. Well those wide receivers from South Florida have some payback to do that's for sure. As many times as they've had their blocks knocked off by uh, Miami defensive backs tonight. Jewel miss. Looking for Taurus Johnson number 89. He just never got he never was comfortable in the pocket like I mean you never saw him being able to throw the football effectively from from the drops the early drops maybe got him off point but it just he never was comfortable and and the pressure clearly <laughs> you got to account for that as well. Joel miss on second and ten. Got his man. The other number four. Carlton Hill, another drop. And now they're, you know, they're arguing with each other. Carlton, you just got to catch the You're football. You're killing me, man. Yeah, you just got to catch the football. I mean, that there's no excuse for that. Pat Jones, we've said it time and time again. He hadn't made all the, the great throws, but if it hits you in the, the hands or the number, you got to catch it. When Jim Levitt goes back to the drawing board, Charles, what is South Florida going to take away from this game that's going to be a valuable a value to them in the future? Don't don't let the game get out of hand right away. Turnovers. Part of snaps. False start. On the offense, number 75, five-yard penalty, remains third down. Right away, Walter Walker hitting himself in the head, trying to, you know, no, that's a mental error, so he knows. 
Uh, but one of the things is right away, the first two drives, they give up turnovers, and Miami capitalized on those turnovers. Now, Miami probably didn't play as well as they wanted to offensively, so if you hold the ball and you're able to drive it down the field, maybe get a field goal, it's a different ball game. But right away, they're in a hole, South Florida. Well, one thing's for sure, they won't play another opponent this season the caliber of Miami. They've got Pittsburgh in a couple of weeks. They have a bye next week, and then they've got West Virginia, Rutgers, Syracuse, Cincinnati, and Connecticut. To me, those are all winnable games from what I've seen from this football team this year. If the defense continues to play the way they do, and if their offense can protect the football, and they're clearly, you know, Jim Levitt talking to Carlton Hill, because when your quarterback is throwing you the football or he's struggling, you need to help him out. <laughs> but I agree with you. The schedule is, is very favorable for them for the rest of the season. Brandon Baker back to punt for South Florida. Another big kick. The senior from Lake Placid, Florida, another Floridian on this team. We talked about that. 92% of the players. How did we get here? Well, it's been a long night. A night of turnovers, tip balls, interceptions, the running of Tyrone Moss, three touchdowns tonight. Pressure, fumbles, opportunistic defense. Tyrone Moss tonight, three touchdowns. <laughs> Second half. Tyrone Moss, three touchdowns. <laughs> he was a workhorse tonight. And finally, South Florida getting on the board. Johnny Payton with the reception in front of Devin Hester. Didn't mean matter that Hester was guilty of pass interference. Payton with the catch. And that's how we got to 27-7 here with 3-16 remaining in the fourth quarter. Miami content to keep things on the ground. Running on Darren Thomas. Thomas. Starting to see some of the backup offensive linemen as well from Miami. Ron, just a freshman. Gives those guys an opportunity to play. Chris Rutledge in the game. Kirby Freeman is a new quarterback. Texas. Curious as to why, you know, Miami has to go outside the state to get the get their quarterback. Wright's from California. Freeman's from Texas. Well, that, and uh, not bad. <laughs> Maybe that's why. <laughs> <laughs> Show me something. He did. <laughs> right away. I think also, too, Miami has the ability to go outside of the state. Right. They've got that kind of cachet yeah. and yeah. reputation for quarterbacks. And Freeman just showed some nice moves, showed some nice running there. Losing his balance. I think he was so excited to be in open field. He's normally not in that situation when he's going against the first team defense right. for Miami. <laughs> I think it's surprising. He probably spent most of the week being Kyle Wright. Or uh, being Pat Julmas, I should say. Duran Thomas getting the ball again. You know, that's the thing. A lot of the guys from South Florida may initially get a letter from Miami, but Miami can recruit, like you said, all over the nation, and they can selectively go after certain guys that play quarterback. You know, the top player in 2002 was um, Kyle Wright. You know, he was Gatorade National Player of the Year. So, <laughs> you know. They've got it. They, USA Today National Player of the Year from a year ago, Kenny Phillips from Carroll City, Miami, Carroll City High School in Miami. Deron Thomas having trouble getting loose there. His offensive lineman didn't give him much help. Just think of the intensity level that they played with in their spring game. You can think of that with Florida State also. If how many people come back? You know, you got Ray Lewis on the sideline watching in the spring. You have, you know, Jonathan Vilma, Dan Morgan, if you're just thinking linebacker. 
and the intensity level that they play with in their spring practice is probably at a higher pace than you may see in some games. Their offense is still not where they need to be. If they're going to contend for the national championship like they want to do, they have to play much better on offense. They're far from that caliber right now. Kane fans want the flag and they finally get it. Freeman going up top for Khalil Jones, number 87. That was pretty blatant. Yeah. Pass interference on the defense. Number 25. 15-yard penalty from the previous line of scrimmage. Walt Smith. Automatic. First down. But you know, Mike, the one thing I see on this offense is even though they have some seniors, they have quite a bit of young guys playing important positions as you, as you move forward. Freeman puts the ball up in the air, clearly. Defender and the receiver getting tangled up there. You know, you know, most college football fans probably have turned this game off now, but this is these are important moments for all these youngsters. Yeah. Getting a chance, especially for South Florida, getting a chance to play. Even though they're Miami second stringers, they're still Miami, and they'll be first stringers one of these days. And this means something down the road. It's not garbage time. Well, the story tonight has been South Florida turnovers that Miami's offense have been able to turn into touchdowns or field goals and their oppressive, impressive defense. Final seconds of the clock ticking down. And that is it from the Orange Bowl. South Florida came in with high hopes, hopes of knocking off number nine for the second week in a row. However, their offense ran into a buzzsaw called the Miami Hurricane defense. Well, Miami said, hey, we're not Louisville. <laughs> we know you had a good game. You can't sneak up on us. And clearly, they were ready to play. Jim Levitt, he'll have better days, that's for sure. His team learned a lot against the Miami Hurricanes. One of the things that they learn is how far, far they have to go to become one of America's elite teams. Larry Coker, his team improves their record to three and one. Overall, so a big win for Miami. The last three times they had been ranked number nine, they had lost, but they win tonight. Once again, the final score, Miami 27, UFS 7. This has been a presentation of ESPN, the worldwide leader in sports. For Charles Arbuckle, I'm Mike Adamley. Good night from Miami, Florida. Now let's send you back to our ESPNU studios, Mike Hall and company. Guys, take it away.